Okay, we are live. Thank you, guys. Sorry for the shaky start. A little bit late on the time, but better late than never. We've got a special guest here tonight, as you can see, Jason Pichiers from the Epic um, Archaics.com Archaics channel, YouTube channel, which uh, most of you will know by now. But if you don't, you can find that all linked up down below in the descriptions box. This is a master chronologist, decoder, one of the best decoders in the world today who's broken more codes than a Bletchley pack, okay? <laughs> Jason <laughs> Brichius. <laughs> All right, man. How you guys doing? Doing, I'm doing fantastic. I was, I, I was just sorry I um, actually, you know, didn't want to press you and got the days wrong and everything, but we're here now, and this is going to be epic. The subjects uh, that we're going to talk about uh, like really anticipated actually i'm looking forward to talking about some of this stuff um which well, is I, actually i have no hey, hey martin i have no problem with you taking the blame but on this one i wrote the wrong day on the calendar don yeah, will tell did. you i wrote tuesday <laughs> tuesday 3 p.m i didn't even think i had a podcast today that's why we're starting late because <laughs> i had to rush back home i was on the interstate when you hit me up Oh no, all's yeah. good. I was thinking, I was thinking, I hope he's not hurrying on the interstate because uh, you know, crazy oh, there. Yeah. So I, I, I can't yeah. drive 55 anyway. Well, that's it. I know. I thought you might have been on your motorbike. Yeah, no, no, not today. Not today. It's a bit hot. Okay, so um, tonight, some of the subjects we're going to cover tonight, some of the top backs, some I'm really interested actually in. Um, and there has been, um, I noticed doing a little bit of research this week, the idea of vapor canopy has been around for some time concerning like that they're on about in their globe mechanics. Um, and it's, it's, it's similar, but it's not the same. Yours is um, more explanatory of a, of a period of time. And would it return was one of your more recent videos. Really, really good. Got me thinking a lot. Um, you know, at this moment, I'm completely convinced of the time slot that you've got. You know, your chronology um, is undeniable. And 138 years to me um, is a given. I think that's a thing, though. I, I'm, I'm truly convinced. I have no doubt, actually. Um, well, I've been, I've been holding back, Martin. Uh, I, need, I yeah. need to let you know something. You know, I, I recently put the montages out. It's eight videos on the Phoenix Phenomenon that takes 85 or 86 phoenix videos and edits them all down into a chronological format that's easy more easy to absorb i did that to refamiliarize a lot of people and to make it easier to process for newer people coming to my channel but the truth is is i've been holding back a lot and i've been telling my diehard archaics veterans that I've been holding back because I've been waiting for that critic. I've been waiting for that person who wanted to come forward and challenge the Phoenix thesis. And it just hasn't happened. I've been calling this out for three years now. Mm. So there's no reason for me to hold this information back anymore. I'm going to go ahead. My Phoenix thesis is almost done and I'm going to post it on YouTube and it's going to blow your mind, dude. More data and information on the Phoenix phenomenon than I have ever released on YouTube or in my published books. It's almost finished. Wow, well, exciting. Ooh. Oh, I got to see that. Wow. Um, yeah, I was, save, I was saving it all just so I could beat somebody up with all the data, but it doesn't look like I'm ever even going to get it, get into any type of confrontation about it. So it's all right. I can't think of anyone that would step up to that, though, because, you know, it's the most comprehensive chronology I've ever seen. I've got it myself on a drive. I just blows my mind to compare it and just think about it. Um, yeah. And it's just co cor correlates over and over and over and over and over again. It's just impossible not to be, actually, I'm thinking. Um and we can talk about, um, you had mentioned um, something to do with the glass ceiling breaking like glass. Now, that's really interesting. You should say that as well. Oh, that's yeah. Listen, listen, it's, it's, yeah. that's it. Listen, these, these political pundits and, and like Hillary Clinton and all that, they know exactly, it's double speak. They know exactly what they're referring to and how they're using it in modern parlance to, to describe something else. But to them, it's an inside joke. They all know. They all know that's what the vapor canopy does right before the vapor canopy period ends. 
something causes the entire sky to flash freeze. And when it does, the vapor canopy freezes as well. Scatters like glass and iceberg sized pieces fall to the ground, destroying everything. And then those pieces melt so we don't see what caused the destruction. And this is why we have so many archaeological anomalies. Why so when the collapse of the vapor canopy is then followed, all this destruction, all these giant shards of ice falling from the sky upon cities and communities in the countryside. But it's always followed with 40 to 60 to maybe 65 days of torrential rain as the vapor canopy empties and the sea levels rise. And all this moisture goes to the Arctic and the Antarctic, and it goes quickly. You know, the only survivors are in the temperate areas. You know, it, it's in, the, it's in the, the center of the world. Because the closer you get to the outside of the world, it just gets colder and colder and colder and colder. And all that vapor canopy ice is all over the edge and in the dead center. Hmm. The canopy to me is the dome. They call it the canopy in the Quran when they refer to it. Oh, yeah. Coincidentally. Yeah. They call it the canopy that covers. And also, in um, I'm sure the Egyptians as well got a version of the canopy. Um, oh yes, they do. Are, they have there. There are Egyptian. There are Egyptian reliefs that show the goddess leaning over like a dome, and the stars sure. are inside They're of her, it. and the sun and the moon. You've seen those. You've seen those pictures, yeah. But yeah, even sure. in Genesis, sure. it's called the farmer. It's called the firmament. Yeah, yeah. there's no doubt. There's no, no doubt. Um, and, yeah, his, um, the history of the world is divided between vapor canopies and temperate periods and we're in a temperate period right now getting ready to go into another vapor canopy period that's the whole history of the world vapor canopy no vapor canopy vapor canopy no vapor canopy this cycle is what describes everything we have found in the archaeological record hmm. would, would you suggest that there would be um lesser events leading up to a phoenix event oh yeah oh yeah that's uh even even in the uh, Midrashic texts and in the Haggadoth, we have a lot of Jewish commentaries. Uh, the Book of Jasher, even in the Anakian text, we have oh, well, even in the Book of Genesis, 120 years before the before the flood, Noah saw a sign. But in the Book of Enoch, Noah saw the earth become inclined, and the stars in the sky, the stellosphere began to tilt real severely right before, uh, right before the vapor canopy collapsed. Oh, oh, yeah. It's a, yeah. This isn't a singular event. It's, it, I mean, it is as far as the collapse. It only takes hours for it to collapse. But, but it's it's you're going. It's going to be a lot of sky phenomena. We're going to be seeing all kinds of inexplicable and unusual things. And this is why our governments are already conspiring to to enact legislation that basically makes it mandatory for people to report sky phenomena because they're going to document it as aliens and UFOs, but it's not, it's not. The United States has already started this. The United States already yeah, had no, a have, major yeah. bri Agreed. briefing where they're going to start calling all the sky phenomena and start labeling it as UFOs and unidentified. And it is to them unidentified, but it, but it's misdirection. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of stress in the sky. We're gonna have a lot of uh, uh, or we're gonna have a lot of uh, aurora type phenomena in the sky, and it's gonna be blamed on it's gonna be blamed on everything than than you know except for what's really happening, and that is uh, we're 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 about to enter a vapor canopy period, and we're going to have an increase in volcanism because that's what happens every time. And volcanism always also uh, is accompanied with an increase in earthquake activity. Yeah, an increased CO2, right? Because of the extra volcanicity. Man, I love See, those pictures. That's awesome. Yeah, I got I got many images like this. But, you know, there's the Jewish version of Earth. There's the Hebrew and... You know, there's all different, and they all show exactly the same thing. You know that. Now, you know, now, I, check I this out. If you, if you, go on, sorry. No, you're right. That that's that's the Jewish version, but look at it closely. Yeah. It's also the ancient Indian version. It looks like a turtle. It so does, and I said this years ago. It so does because um, you know, they say these are the pillars of Earth, don't they, or God's uh, footstool, don't they? The God's footstool. 
Um, but, you know, it shows you oceans above. I really do feel there's waters above and waters below, just as Genesis says. Yeah, and, and I like this flash, flash freezing because if it did flash freeze all the way around us and all of that is ice now, keeping out whatever else is going on, then with a, another Phoenix event, surely that this stuff would melt, rupture, bringing in all extra what? water causing a biblical flood because yeah. everything it's a, in my mind we're you know we're in a giant lake um, and everything is elevated around us this so-called ice wall you know this frozen and and the bit in the middle funnily enough so there's a another version there the floodgates very interesting that they got like the book of enoch got windows floodgates to let the water yes, in. <laughs> in every picture yeah. that you show me I find it very interesting that each one also depicts this underworld because listen in the in the model that's been passed down through history if the entire sky flash froze to where the mesosphere turned to solid ice and because of the weight and pressure it wasn't able to stay up there and it fractured and then individual pieces the size of houses and, and football fields then free fell to the ground destroying everything now check this out while this is happening Humans are surviving, not just humans, but every race survives, and they have col colonies of survivors while this is going on. And yet we do have traditions of people hiding in the underworld. We've even found 60 underground cities in Turkey alone and a few more in, in South yeah. America. So it's a, to me, I don't believe there's a lot of people staying on the surface. I believe that they prepared for this. They knew what was going on. They they didn't. There wasn't Noah in the ark. There was Noah's people and a fleet of arks. And there wasn't one race like 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 the Phrygian legends have a, have the story yeah. of Anakos. King Anakos knew that the coming calamity of the flood was coming. But if it was just a flood that was coming, why would you build cities underground that were going to get drowned out? He built cities underground and hid his people in those cities to get through the cataclysm. Anakos sounds a lot like uh, Anunnaki, but uh, oh. what I'm saying is to me, to me, what I have found is that we have enough evidence to put together the picture that before this cataclysm, everything was technologically advanced like it is today, and they were prepared for it. Many of them hid in the underworld. Others hid in mountain citadels like Mount Cheyenne and, uh, and, and other uh, uh, dumbs and military bases, and, and others were on like barges and cruise ships and aircraft carriers and, they, and humanity just spread out trying to survive wherever they could and history was basically written by those survivors not by the libraries that were that were left intact because those were hidden away in the underworld or, or destroyed on the surface but this destruction had to have been protected against. You couldn't have just stayed on the surface because, look, the freezing went to the bottom of the oceans. It didn't just stay in the sky, Martin. We have frozen, flash frozen jellyfish, cephalopods, yeah, yeah. squids, octopus. All these have been found flash frozen in the bottom of the ocean. So the only place that makes sense that people could have really hid and, and survived deep. Would have would have been underground, or geothermal heat would have protected them. Can you see um, what I'm presenting? Now, the Book of Miracles. Oh yes, that's yes. I Astronomical see it exactly. phenomena. Now listen, uh, yeah. It looks like it looks like the vapor canopy is peeled back right here, so you can see what it hides. What's really what's really hidden in oh, the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I often think yeah, like, you know, all. when you see, you know, sometimes you see these people arriving, you know, I've talked about the arrivals and they can't seem to go out in the sun for some reason. They have to cover up with all of these clothing and big summer hats. They can't go in the sun. And I can't help thinking that they're like, you know, probably more suited to like, you know, a vapor canopy or maybe even underground because they're all so pale and troglodyte like. You know, the, all of these people, they could have just come from underground, some breeding program. That is completely conceivable. This place gets populated from somewhere, that's for sure. Yeah, well, that's what we're looking at there. Oh, there's no doubt. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's some all awesome, those are awesome pictures. Those that's oh, this book is second to none, man. It shows you um I like crazy things like Alexandra the Great when he's seen um atmospheric phenomena. There's there was loads of you know, Constantine the Great was supposed to have seen a giant cross over a lake mm. in Monte Christianity, and that's where the Roman Catholics wow. come from. Um it is seemingly like some sort of, you know, he took it as a as a sign, a religious sign, but it could have easily been some sort of these crazy atmospherical phenomena that happen. Yeah. You know, I think about comets quite a lot. I noticed right. that um, a comet seems to show up. There seems to be something going on with a calendar. A monarchy changes. There's a giant war. And then, <laughs> you know, when a comet goes over, over like in 1811, uh, 1812, you know, it's just. It seems yeah. to be a That's correlation. A, the, China, the Chinese called the Chinese called it the mandate of heaven changing. Yeah. Anytime mm. some sky phenomena showed up and it was really important, that's what they did. They uh they changed it was called the mandate of heaven, and the emperor had to change. If the emperor stayed seated, it always bode ill for the empire. Mm. Hey, do you see that date on the bottom? 1549? Yeah, 1549. Is that reset? Yeah. Is that a Phoenix? Okay. Listen, listen, 1549 Anno Domini, which is a calendar created by the Catholic Church, means absolutely nothing. But 1549 BC is the exact year of a Phoenix reset in, in the Cyclades region of the of the Aegean in the Mediterranean. Yeah, uh, sure. I, ha I have data on the Phoenix on the Phoenix destruction recorded by Egyptian scribes for what equals our year 1549 of BC. That's interesting. Wow. That is interesting. Super interesting. You know, this Hydra, you know, he's supposed to believe this thing actually existed, but look at these flames again coming from the sky. You see this a hell of a lot. This brimstone. Yeah. Stone that comes from the brim. Yeah. Uh, Tiamat was supposed to be, uh, Tiamat was supposed to be a seven headed dragon of chaos that came from the nun. This, this is the ocean of space. And that's what that picture looked like. It was trying to depict from more terrestrial perspective. Yeah, let's talk the about the black showed. sun. This, oh, sorry, the one before. And let's talk about the black sun. It's, you know, they can, yeah, this is the many headed hydra, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so I think it's the religion. Seven headed. Yeah, just like in the book of Revelation. And they're asking, you know, praying yeah. for. So, Tiamat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the Babylonian Tiamat, dragon of chaos, brought destruction to the world, but also uh, the, wor the root word in Tiamat is Tiham, and it's found in the second verse in the Bible describing the dark chaos that covered the earth. Hmm. <laughs> you think this um, place is, um, has a protocol, should we call it, that is underlying that it's set against us in any way for us to, you know, fail. Yeah, oh, there, I, I have no doubt. Well, I have no yeah. doubt. There's two major ones. One of them is the Phoenix Cataclysm Protocol, and the other one is the Nemesis X Cataclysm Protocol. They come from the set. They have the same origin, but they have very, very different periodicities. They appear at very different times, and they do different things. And they, they, they look differently in the sky as well. But, uh, They've only appeared one time together in the same year in all of world history, and that was the year 522. That is the origin of our present calendar. This this is a huge clue as to just how bad it had destroyed the world because uh, as soon as it appeared, we entered a 300-year period that is known as the Dark Ages. It also mm -hmm. started our present calendar, the Anno Domini calendar. You mentioned... That was in the year uh, you mentioned that, you know, you think there might have been a new sun, uh, you know, following the unveiling, if you like, of the vapor canopy collapse. Um, I tend to agree with that, you know. Definitely. Yeah, well, that's when that's when all the that's when all the ancients agree that uh, the sun first appeared. It was considered the sun was born. Uh, that's when all the sun calendars started and all the all the dynasties that called themselves children of the sun, they all started at that time. It was when the vapor canopy collapsed. 
Because uh, I, you know what? I'm going to clarify something real quick. Because a lot of people mm-hmm. get confused by how the stars and the moon could be seen during a vapor canopy, but the sun could not be seen. And there's a lot of confusion. Even on my channel, people ask this question a lot, and I get kind of tired of answering it. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and address that right now. Uh, first of all, I didn't invent vapor canopy. I pulled this out of books from the 1920s, 30s. 50s and 70s, as well as modern research that is ongoing right now, you using hyperbaric chambers and dealing with pressure and uh, uh, ambient ambient radiation as well as ultraviolet light. And and there's researchers that are finding out some very profound things about insects, amphibians, reptiles, and plants, and how they actually thrive in under dark lights that would have been produced produced by the vapor canopy, and that the sunlight actually doesn't allow plants and 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 reptiles and amphibians to grow to their true de- genetic potential but violet light on uh, in higher pressure allows them to grow to astonishing sizes and uh oh uh, this is this is the whole theory behind hydroponics and dark lights that when people yeah, sure. are grow, growing all those things that they that they grow uh that's yeah. the whole theory behind that so under a vapor canopy we have what what what's what, what's called the mesosphere. It's still up there today, and it's and it's a bunch of water droplets that are suspended in a real thick layer of the atmosphere. But this table sphere, which is called the mesosphere, in ancient times, the the mesosphere had become so so filled with moisture because of volcanism. Pumice and ash put into the lower mesosphere trapped all that moisture. And then cosmic dust, which is what the the phoenix deposits. Every time the phoenix comes, it deposits this fine red dust and it blankets our world. And when the mesosphere was filled with this dust particle, and the and the pumice and ash from from volcanism, the mesosphere it created this greenhouse effect. It increased a very short period of time. It created a high pressure system. Now the entire sky was clouded in the daytime and it was very warm, like a tropical, like a tropical period. And this moisture would actually be very, very gray in the, in the high upper, upper atmosphere. But from the ground, the sky looked purple And it would be this deep violet purple. And they were very used to that. It was nothing unusual about that. Mm. The only evidence a sun existed was that a part of the sky was a little bit brighter than any other part of the sky. The rest of the sky was very dark. This is the Native American traditions talk about this period a lot. They call it the dark midnight uh, or the dark purple sky. Oh, it's the period of spider grandmother. She had this web across the sky that trapped all the dew. So under a vapor canopy conditions, the sky with the sun above the vapor canopy, what would happen is that this, uh, uh, this, this warmth that was created would suspend this moisture and it would cause light, light diffraction. The sun would never be visible, but when the sun when the sun moved away from an area of the world, the moisture in that area now cooled and it condensed. And it and just, just like Genesis says, in those days before the flood, there was no rain, but a mist watered the ground and the plants and, and, and filled up the pools full of water. And as the sun came up the next day, that mist left the ground ground and went back into the sky this is why when the vapor canopy collapsed the rainbow was seen for the first time rainbows had never been seen until the collapse of the vapor canopy and it's because the sun had never been visible before because it was hidden by the vapor canopy so this vapor canopy with all this moisture spreading out and falling to the ground it actually magnified the moon and the stars. And this is why the moon goddess was so big in the vapor canopy period. In in the pre-flood world, goddess worship was focused on the star. They used stellar calendars because the stars could be seen clearly. As a matter of fact, the stars were magnified. And this is why we have legends that talk about the disappearance of certain stars in certain calendars. Uh, 
constellations. They didn't disappear. The magnitudes were altered when the vapor canopy collapsed. This is quite natural. Under a vapor canopy with the sky at nighttime acting like a telescope, a magnifying lens, people without the use of optics could look up at the sky and see stars of the second and third and fourth magnitude. But you can't do that today. Today you go outside and you look up at the stars. You can see first and second magnitude stars. But hmm. but the sky isn't isn't magnified, and the moon is now tiny compared to the moon that the ancients described. And it's not because the moon is closer; it's because the sky was acting like a like a concave lens in a telescope, hmm. magnifying the entire vault. Yeah, I had a dream about a massive moon in the sky years ago. It's really interesting. The sky was all purple. There were people running everywhere. <laughs> I don't try to run from my destruction. You know, I didn't even care. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a cool picture. What the hell? It looks, like, it looks like an explosion. People blowing out. Yeah, man. Yeah. What well, you find through the Book of Miracles for this period, the whole world's getting battered by stuff falling from the sky. Strange atmospherical phenomena. It really does look like the end of the world is happening 500 years ago. <laughs> it really does. Right. You know. So another thing to clarify is that, oh, that's cool. That's mm. like the fiery flaming sheriff that kept, that kept the whole world at bay from being able to go back in the Genesis oh, account. The fiery yeah, yeah. flaming sword was designed, was, was described as being in the sky and it kept mankind, Adam and Eve from going back to paradise. But, uh, it's a reset yeah, didn't it, it, machine. Oh, yeah. That's what it that's is. Right. In Adam and Eve, yeah, 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 the fame, fiery sword. Yeah, it's a, it's a reset machine. The fiery flaming sword appears in the sky, and you can expect a reset. And the resets, repeated resets, are what keep what keeps mankind from going back to paradise right now. But to clarify, uh, people are worried about the destruction at the collapse of the vapor canopy. How are we going to survive that? We're not even worried about that. <laughs> we're we're about to enter a new vapor canopy period starting in May 2040, and it's going to appear very fast. Everything's getting it set in place the 10 years before that. That's not that's not that's nothing comparable to the collapse of a vapor canopy. None of us in the world today are going to be alive when the vapor canopy collapses, but we're going to be here. A lot of us are going to be here when it returns. Hmm. I think that is the case. And these, these comets as well, I think they're definitely a path. I bet one shows up. But yeah, you can see the, the way that they, Yeah, this one. Sorry? No, you just showed you just showed a picture of a of, of flames coming out the top of a, a cloud. Yeah. This is yeah. a scientific this is a scientific book with anomalous reports. I did a video about two or three weeks ago, William Corliss documents many clouds. When many yeah. times when people saw something just like this in the 1800s, just weird, erratic clouds, some of them that were red on the inside, uh, tornadoes that had these weird glowing orbs on the inside of the tornadoes, mm -hmm. uh, and, and clouds that were literally on fire and that would shoot fiery lightning bolts, not just electrical lightning bolts. But this is a scientific book called uh, Mysterious Universe. Uh, William Corliss. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I have, I, I have four. I have four William Corliss books. I've only done presentations on two of them. I have another. I have another two two uh, William Corliss books. I'm about to do a presentation on that shows all the weird anomalous and ancient ooh parts. All the all the weird archaeological finds that we've that we have and documented uh, that just show that the actual histories we've been told by by academia are bullshit and that and that we have been technologically advanced in the past before yeah for sure i can't believe that they go with the interpretation of you know you know this we started from nowhere you know the you know cavemen and we've you know evolved into this is the highest point we've ever been right now uh, just there's just the evidence is just too much that this is not the case i'll just show a couple of these evidences here um do you remember the we did that vlog on the great wall of rome yeah man this is amazing i cannot yeah. even believe that we yeah. missed this yeah even, even with max e max 
Yeah, even with Max Egan and I, Max Egan and I redid the whole deal to make the yeah, I watched that. Yeah, it was good. And, yeah. And, and we came up with some more scenarios. And Max, I don't know, I haven't been following, but while Max was still here in Texas, he continued that research and he used Google Earth and showed me things that blew my things that me and you should have saw. But he showed oh. that the whole idea that the Great Wall, the reason that it ended at the sea was because it was for shipping. He proved it because we didn't look at it from an aerial perspective. But the end of that wall it, that goes into the water is the beginning of an ancient shipping quay. And it looked like hundreds of ships could dock there at the same time. And the wall yeah. goes in many directions. And you can tell at one time water came all the way up into, into all those ancient quays and docks. And uh, what, what, what Max Egan found was amazing. He absolutely proved oh. we were right. It was, it was, oh, it was the Amazon of the ancient world. I, uh, um, right, posted sand, last week. Sorry. I can't believe that. Yeah. Oh, no, it's just ridiculous. I posted last week. Um, they when um, the Ch the Japanese invaded Manchuria, um, they used to, they matched the entire Japanese army west using the Great Wall. The whole yep. Japanese army matched on it. Yeah, I was like, what? But yeah, that's no defensive measure. Look how thin the wall. Was Hell no. Take that that, 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 that thing was a road. Yeah. But listen, yeah, listen. See I, I'm a I'm a builder. I, I'm yeah. looking at a structure. I'm looking at a structure that is filled with sand. So yeah. when I'm huh. building a conveyance, like when I'm adding flagstone surface to somebody's driveway, or if I'm making a sidewalk of pavers or flags, flagstone for somebody, I'm going to excavate about four to six inches down according to what kind of material I'm building and what the ground is like. I'm going to lay fabric, and then on top of that fabric, I'm going to lay gravel, black star yeah. gravel. It's really, it's really tough. A couple inches of this stuff, and then I'm going to put paver base over it. That looks just like paver base. This is what you f use as filler on architectural projects when you don't have any need to use a bunch of stone. That's yeah. what you do. You fill it with, yeah. you fill it with sand. It's, yeah, they didn't the beef it up or anything. But, yeah, perfect palace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think crazy. that I think that strengthens our case there, Jason. Don't you? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. So, Absolutely. Um, you know, just a random That's a beautiful, picture. that's a beautiful gate. It is a beautiful gate. I really appreciate this gate. I can't believe, you know, something as terrible has happened, though, in this area. Because of the size of this, this was probably holding up maybe even a floor to a building, or we know. But just impossible size buildings in the past taken out. Yeah. And then there's this stuff well, those pillar about. Yeah, that's technolithic there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I think this yeah, it's is, made by um, machine. Um, oh, they did say where this one was. Oh, this is actually in Cusco. This wall. Yeah, that's that's yeah. all South American. That's it's very yeah. it's very distinct. I've seen hundreds of pictures from Brian Forster's uh presentations and books. I've got some of his books that show photographs of all that. Uh, yeah. yeah, this yeah, it's amazing. It's almost as if they put those stones there and then shaped them in situ. Well, a lot of people have surmised, you know, that they might have used some um, sound, some specific sound to make the yeah. stones, stones soft. Um, uh, I guess that would work. I'm not sure how that would work with the perps and, and uh, bedding. You know, maybe it just have to be like, you know, just turn the sound off once they're in place. I'm not sure. I gotta think about it. Eh? Yeah. And uh yeah, look at this one. There's now a really weird one in Mesoamerica. It's not exactly like an Olmec. Uh I don't know, it's got a mask on. Looks like it's got a German helmet on or something. Skeleton, isn't it? No, I've never seen that one before. It's a new picture to me. Yeah, I'm just wondering about the green. I was wondering whether the whole thing was made of jade or something until I looked at the nose. It seems like there's a green covering on it, a <clears throat> different color underneath. Mm. But it might have been this, you know, yeah, this is the 70s. This is not a uh, color alteration. So, yeah, I don't know what their frame of reference is for that strange head. Uh, you've seen most of these before, but you get these indentations on them all the time, like, the, you know, like something could pick it up on all of Puma Punko and. 
you know yeah. look at that that's just ridiculous isn't it look at the size of it for people the, yeah. it, there's listen you know, a lot of these geometric forms and all that they're showing off there's it's that's literally what it is they are showing off these mm -hmm. uh uh the building technique they took a lot of pride in that there's no doubt what about the godages then like this one here with his similar to the egyptian theme with a, a bird's head and he's holding some strange thing looks like a pineal gland yeah um, pine cone or something I, I think pine cone but i think there's more going on because he's got some like google wristwatch on and you get down to his legs yeah i don't think any humans got that i'm not even sure what that is it is weird it is weird and then they always got these handbags with them as well and he's got two wristwatches. I know it's Buzz Aldrin. I don't even know how that guy is even breathing. <laughs> um, yeah. Where's six yeah. wristwatches? It's a Masonic thing or something. Um, I think he's got a load of Havana cigars for later as well. But, you know, two pairs of wings. and But a human body and a bird's head. Why Why is that? And why did they copy the, the technology, the wristwatch, the handbag? I wonder. Yeah. Uh, you have, you've covered that, haven't you? Um, sexy human yeah yeah <laughs> I, can, I don't know how to say it but it sounds like sexy, sexy human, human. sax of hawaii con or whatever yeah <laughs> it does ain't nobody can pronounce that ain't nobody can pronounce that place that place is crazy no 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 it is it's got like a melted fort up here on the hill have you ever looked at it on the hill up here it's a crazy obliterated no, fort i don't know i've got yeah. yeah i've got hundreds of pictures of the south america sites they're, they're they're amazing but they yeah. seem to date older than the near eastern sites like like older than than uh, babylon and all that yeah can't really date yeah, those stuff, are amazing. Though, can you yeah look at this though and they got it everywhere there where people are living it's just you know another world another people there's the egyptians yep. they like to bury human beings inside <laughs> i was thinking about the death process going on with the egyptians actually today it's just weird, you know, that they have right. to prepare a world for the to the after, like, and you know, it, and they've got the underworld too, and, and same as uh, the Veda, you know, they got the Naga who comes up from the underworld, gods of the underworld, um, with the serpent's tail and comes up through a portal. I literally tell you that in the Veda. So, like, they got these parallels of this underworld in and the canopy as well in all of these uh, so-called Asian cultures. But yeah, the uh, Egyptians preparing themselves for the afterlife seems strange. All of their belongings they're going to use because they think they're going to be walking around. So how would you curve a stone like that? How would you bend yeah, a stone? That's... Yeah, I've read I've read all the various theories. There's David Hatch, yeah, Polymer. Porter's itemized. Yeah. yeah, he goes through the theories and too. That's I would have to agree that it's sometimes. I mean, you know that there's a plant. They, they, I just don't see them producing enough of that plant unless it's in a vapor canopy environment. Then the plant would be everywhere. But there is a yeah. plant that it takes. It takes a lot of them to. It takes a lot of these plants to produce this chemical. But this chemical does soften rock. And David 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 Hatcher Childress talks about this in one of his books as to a theory right. of how they could have done that. But in order to have done that, it would have required a lot more than you can presently get out of these plants. So. Because because of Super how many you know how, how many of these megaliths we found like that, but in vapor yeah. canopy conditions, these plants would have been huge and plentiful. Hmm, that is super interesting. I sometimes wonder if the Voynich manuscript was kept underground and survived from like vapor canopy times, because there's all like plants that are not in this world today in there and strange vegetation i can't help thinking that if there is an apocalyptic event they're going to need seed banks or they're going to need to re terraform right. somewhat and definitely plant this place out because you know <clears throat> it's going to be obliterated after the water etc volcanicity so what do you think these things were you know well oh the the prevailing theory was they knew their geography well and they understood that they needed, if they were going to buy, build anything of permanence, they were going to have to earthquake proof it. And the very mm. fact that these walls are still put together shows that they are, they are definitely earthquake proof. 
the geometrical right. forms and the and, and and the mishappen way that these were form fit together so perfectly, and they still they're still together. And we know hundreds of earthquakes have happened to these structures, and they're still here. So this is not some theory. The uh the many archaeologists are on board with the fact that this type of polygonal. Uh, a megalithic architecture was specifically designed to withstand earthquakes. Yeah. That makes sense, doesn't it? It's still there today. Wow, uh, is that real? <laughs> yeah, so I found a load of depictions. I thought you find it interesting. Um, in medieval depictions as well of giant cockroaches or cockroach-like things or, or maybe even scorpion-like things. They're in medieval. I got. Oh, let me just see if it's in this in this uh, share a minute. Uh, excuse me. Still loading. Ah, oh, it bloody disappeared. Excuse me. Sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. To refresh. So um. Yeah, um, I found them in medieval pictures as well. They seem to be giant uh, scorpions or something. There's one there on a church. Come on, is that the end of my pictures? Oh, I must have saved them somewhere else. Um, yeah, but they're giants. And you see um, people trying to fight them, etc. They got like, how well, many legs? Well, eight legs. Wow. Yeah, I wow. don't know what to make of them. Yeah, yeah, they're on churches as well. I got about half a dozen depictions of them. Oh. I know you've seen the petroglyphs uh, in America of the giant birds carrying people away. Sure. Old... Yeah, yeah, I have. It's I just like... Know. Yeah, it's just craziness. Look at these things, these serpents flying in the air, though. I'm back into the Book of Miracles. It's just like, what are they seeing? You know, so, you know, this is a... I've been aware of this book for donkeys, you know, for a real long time. I don't think this is one of the implanted books. You know, these are things that we know about in antiquity. But, like, what? Is that supposed to actually be a thing? Yeah, it's really hard to tell if these are going to be representations of someone's imagination trying to build and make sense of something they saw in the sky or, mm. or what. Yeah, because we, we don't have anything like this in, in even in cryptozoology, we don't have anything like this. So, yeah. I mean, this is what they could, this is, this is, this could be an art, just a artistic rendition of strange phenomena. You know, cause, you know, in every time period when people see things in the sky, they're, they have, they're always going to interpret interpret what they see by modern frames of reference so, gotcha yeah that's a definite yeah. that's a definite yeah yeah but i you know i often think about you know the sky the possibility of it being water there's enough ancient texts to say it uh, but i've seen stuff up there with right. like vision goggles just flying around a lot of stuff lights whatever um and then they go and talk about rods you know these like serpent like beings that are being photographed they're supposed to be up there and then you've got like cases. I got um, plenty of books in the room that talk about these obscure cases of fish falling from the sky, frogs falling from the sky. Man, um, yeah, yeah, I've got yeah. a lot of that. I got a lot of that on my channel. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. In South Wales, it was raining hard. You know, it's just like you can think. You know, it could be sucked up. You know, from the sea somehow in a in a you know in a, in a mm -hmm. water chute, um, or that these fell from mm -hmm. above where there's uh water. okay well listen let, let's entertain that for a minute okay okay now william corder william cordis provides a whole book explaining that the idea that when biological organisms rain from the sky the scientific explanation that they were just sucked up in a in a in a wind funnel and in yeah, a, uh, a uh a uh, whatever a cyclone or a water spout is yeah. it's untenable because when, when little frogs and tadpoles rain from the sky, nothing else from their environment falls with them. When, when yellow caterpillars fall from the sky out of nowhere, a blue sky, and some of them are frozen and they're still alive. Nothing hmm. else like twigs and leaves from their environment falls with them. When we have these rain of fish, Nothing else from that environment. Where's the seaweed? Got you. Where's all the other stuff yeah. that came, yeah, came yeah, from yeah. that environment? It's, a, right. it's, it's almost as if there's hidden repositories in the sky that rain biological organisms down and just keeps life in our world periodically. Because uh, 
there's been hailstorms where frozen turtles inside the hail have been found. So, uh, yeah, William Cordes yeah. has documented a lot, just like Charles Fort. And it's it's an anomaly because if it's something like a tornado sucking up a pond and then raining it on a community 10 miles away, one, we never have any documentation that that storm happened. And two, when these animals like fish and frogs and turtles and lizards, when they are raining on a community, it, they're the only thing falling no dirt, yeah. no leaves, no no bracket. Yeah, no, it would be a selective. It's not going to be a selective water shoot and just suck the, you know, the one yeah. breed the fish out yeah. and leave all of it. Makes no sense. Uh, wow. Yeah, hey, hey, listen, it does. It, it makes a lot of sense if we're living in a construct because remember, yes. uh, I provide I've provided data showing that the. The Great Black Death Plague of 1346 and 1347 BC, I mean AD, just 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 six cent seven centuries ago, the official story is BS because the historians that are alive that were alive in those days actually wrote something different. Today you'll open up an encyclopedia and they and it will specifically tell you that that infected rats from China were on board trading ships that entered the Mediterranean and brought this disease from the Orient and India into Europe. And this is how the bubonic plague spread. But that's not what was said in those days. In the, in the 13th and 14th century AD, the historian specifically said that cigar-shaped objects appeared over the forests of and Europe. Wow, what a sink. They opened, what a sink. They opened, they, so they opened the up their bellies. <laughs> It, oh wow! Say, so, and when they opened up their bellies, the decomposed, putrid, and chopped up body parts of forest animals were rained on communities and on the forest. And from the stench of these things that were dropped out of these cigars, the bubonic plague spread through Europe, and it was in the interior of Europe before it even reached the ports. Hmm. Yeah, no, there was no. It's not. Um, there's no hard evidence that it was uh, from the fleas of rats, anyway. Oh, <laughs> I covered uh, briefly yeah, in my crazy. last vlog, uh, Jason. Um, Isaac Newton's the uh, chronology of ancient kingdoms amended. He, he wrote it. In, I have uh, that. I, I, I have that yeah. book. I like Isaac Newton. Yeah. Yeah. So do I. So do I. And it's a really, really well written book. I really enjoy it. Um, but he covers, you know, you know, you've nailed it on most of the, you know, the stuff that he says is just like, it's just, wow. He just knows. Okay. He just knows this guy. Um, he talks about the Phoenicians being um, banned from their habit of sacrificing people. <laughs> Bit like the uh, coaxi cattle thing going on with their pyramids, apparently. Uh, can you imagine that coming through all blistering and sparking and just, Real bad noise, I can imagine. And look at the sky, that's purple. Mm -hmm. You know? Phoenix. Oh, those there. buildings have fallen. Oh, oh, oh those yeah. Those buildings have fallen down. Yeah, yeah. The buildings are all, all falling. All in, every picture, the, in every picture, the every buildings are falling. Knocked over. I went well, to um, the West yeah. Country um, this week in um, England and it's where the crop circles happen in Wick, Wiltshire and Somerset. And I was on a double-decker bus. I was dying to see if I could find a crop circle. If I do, I'm going to film it for YouTube. Um, <laughs> but the point is, is there's this thing there called Glastonbury Tour in a town I went to, Glastonbury, a really trippy place full of hippies. And um, they say that this church that's on the top fell down in an earthquake in the 1400s and they say the exact same thing here in wales for a church nearby um that's in two and slid down a hill side and they say oh yeah they slid down the hillside because of this terrible event that happened in the 1400s it's like what were earthquakes really that common back then because they're really not now you know i felt one last year my bed shook and that was it first one in my life Wow. Yeah. So I've been pretty lucky. About... Te Texas doesn't have earthquakes. We just don't, we don't really experience them. You, no, I know that. I know that. I was looking at the topography of uh, Texas only last night, and it's, it, the, the top half's a bit bumpy. The, the rest is completely flat. I mean, flat. 
<laughs> right, a question I want to ask you, Jason. I've been intrigued in. You brought it up briefly, I think, on uh, that epic show you were on with Bro Sanchez. Um, about um, after death, apparently there's this bright white light. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, apparently, yeah. do you go towards it? Because uh, some people call it, say there's a bit of a side of this soul trap thing going on. Or uh, do you run the fuck away? You know, it's um, Cheryl did a vlog the other day where she brought up light and that Lucifer was the light giver and whether the linked it with the vapor canopy and with the light diminishing uh, was the fall of Lucifer. Um, the light diminishing mm -hmm. in this place with the vapor canopy. So I thought that was an interesting thing. I always thought it was Lucifer as some sort of weapon anyway, is what I thought. I thought it was a resetting weapon, just a, a term for it, maybe. I'm just not I'm not real I'm not real big on soul trap theory. I'm just not real no. big on on people people definitively telling me anything that goes on after death and yeah i i understand that there there i understand there's a lot there's a significant amount of people from the the near death experience channels that don't like don't like my message and all that and i'm cool with that i'm comfortable with that you're not going to please everybody but the very fact that anybody can even be on youtube and talk about a oh what they saw and all this stuff is only more proof to me that they didn't die cuz you're here yeah. telling yeah. you about it Therefore, therefore, it's a near death experience. You didn't really die. You didn't come back from the dead. Your central nervous system kept your soul intact to your avatar. You never really left. So whatever you experienced inside of your mind was basically nothing but interpreted through the filters of all, all, all these trip. frames of reference that you built up over your life. And mm. the reason I say this is because I was born into basically well, I wasn't born into it, but I was raised in a Southern Baptist family. So if I was to have an NDE, just like other Christians, when they have NDEs, of course, they're going to see Jesus. But if you're in India, you're not going to see Jesus. You're going to see something oh, else because it goes with Krishna. your, it goes with your frames of reference. And if you're in Japan, raised in local, uh, whatever is a Shintoism, oh, you're not going to you're, it's Jesus isn't the one you're going to see on your oh, NDE. You're going to get on YouTube talking about, oh, my God. I mean, think about all the Japanese YouTube channels. They're talking about NDEs, too. Do you think they're talking about they saw Jesus? No. They're talking about they saw some great spirit or Mother Amaterasu. The they're, talking, they're, they're talking about the great goddess. The great goddess. Therefore, I can't buy the soul trap deal. I especially can't buy it because I can't find a single reference to the whole don't go toward the light stuff until uh, uh, before the movie Poltergeist. Really? Carry on, carry on, don't run to the light. Oh no. I can't find any references problem. to don't to that whole theory. I think the whole thing was born from that movie and it turned into a phenomenon. And now people now people are, are trying to seriously educate others by telling them, oh man, listen, when you go after come on, man, you think the oversoul would really have you live a whole lifetime to learn and, and grow from your experiences and all that. And then no matter what you did in your life, now the real, the real challenge is what you're going to go through in this decision-making pro process. Once your spirit leaves your avatar. Now here's where, well, here's where, where the real decision is made. The whole thing doesn't even make sense. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not buying it, man. I'm not buying anybody telling me anything about what goes on after death because nobody's come back yeah prove it prove it dude <laughs> give me proof <laughs> bring something back with you oh <laughs> uh, yeah i know exactly what you mean what's what this place is though isn't it no man can really prove anything they say and it's what i find the more i know the less i know apparently but there are definite changes going on, Jason. Uh, you know, you mentioned as well that, you know, the more we probe into decoding this uh, puzzle that's been left for us to find out, apparently, and then we get to find yeah. out what this place truly is. Um, by the nature of that, um, does that, you know, require for this place to be reset because it's gone to the next level, game over sort of thing? Well... We live in a 
perceived reality, not a real reality. And that means your reality tunnel is all the data that's been provided by this construct to make you believe that you're in a real world. And hmm. that means it takes a, it requires a processing power and it requires, this is why dungeon programming is its greatest weapon because it uses very little energy to keep the collective in check because they're in a feedback loop of the same information, the same, the same experiences, the same places. And it's very easy to corral them, but the free thinking individual costs the construct a lot of damn energy. So, Yes, the resets and rebooting, these cataclysms, they're necessary because just like any computer, you've got to wipe the field. Too much data gets out there and we start having things like deja vu. We start experiencing things like Mandela effect and synchronicities and coincidences. And these is, yeah. this is when we begin to recognize the programming for what it is. And, but we just don't understand why we're experiencing these things. And Yes, I believe that the 138-year patterning of the Phoenix is one of these systems. It's a reboot system. It edits out material, and it edits in new material, and a lot of people have no idea something just happened, and a whole bunch of people realize something terrible just happened, and they end up for the rest of their lives in sanitariums and in asylums yeah. Yeah. Or, on medica or, on med or on medication. So. Yeah, I believe it. it's just like a system reboot. It's necessary because after a while, there's just too much information, too much data out there. The cloud, the cloud has become too compact with too many, too, too much material. So it's got to wipe yes. the slate clean. And, and that's yeah. what it does. Just a system reboot. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Jason. That's the way I think about it at the moment. And antiquity shows us, you know, there's so many different worlds at our feet. The evidence is on the ground. You can't ignore it. Oh, you know, the pyramids, the all of these things in Mesoamerica. The pyramids are absolutely everywhere, by the way. But look at these, all of these incredible apocalyptic events, stones falling from the sky, rocks, brimstone, again. There's um, sounds that wow. have been shared. Yeah, I know. There's sounds that have been shared. I've posted about them a few times on my channel, and they sound like they come from the air, and they sound like grinding metal but really loud. They've been heard in Bristol. They've mm -hmm. been heard, yeah, they've been recorded all over the world. You know, people just putting their phones out the window with this strange. Mechanic. You ever heard, you ever heard the yeah. term sky quakes? No, not really. To be honest with you. I don't think so. No. Yeah, well, well, this well, is, well, the sky sky quakes is a, a term that's being used more and more now in, in the, uh, in, in the, on the online social media community. Cause Right. There are sounds. It's almost as if there's machinery hidden beyond the sky. And really? uh, this is what yeah. we're hearing. Yeah, yeah. Like the famous uh, Flammarion picture of uh, outside the dome. There's all like Ezekiel's wheels and mechanical bits man, that's outside my, of it. Man, I, that's my favorite picture. I mean, I got it on my wall, man. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. love that picture. It's one of the best gl glimpsing out. <laughs> But, you know, the characteristics of the ether, the air, are just fluid-like. You know, um, birds, you know, literally um, behave like a fish. They, you know, a bird is not fl uh, flown, uh, a bird does not fly, it is flown, a, sh a fish does not swim, it is swum. Because uh, they've got the same characteristics. And planes, they use the same thermodynamics to lift as a sailing ship, exactly the same as a sailing boat. So planes sail across the air because it's a type of liquid. So if, to me, if this air is a liquid and most of this place is liquid, um, I think it's safe to assume that there's liquid above us as well. And that freezing thing you were mentioning. Yeah. Have you? Do you have any pictures? Uh, Martin, do you have any photos showing like SpaceX and NASA rockets going up? And when they hit that barrier, it shows that 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 exhaust now looks like a speedboat going through water. You ever I have those? got that footage somewhere and I have posted it. I don't think I could actually. Uh, uh, let me just bring put when back rockets when rockets skim that barrier. I don't know what kind of barrier it is, but when the rocket skims that. Barrier, yeah, it looks like a speedboat in a lake. Just like, Yes, it looks just like a yeah. speedboat hitting the top of a, a lake. And many people have noticed that just like the astronauts when they're in, when they're doing their spacewalks, you see those water bubbles. 
You in the pictures? Not, you ever seen them? Yeah. Oh, they yeah, edited. Have. Oh, they've done a great job. They've done a great job. Now, some people theorize they yeah, really are it. up there under underwater, and that's why those bubbles are there. Other people saying that no, that's underground, and NASA is is pretending like the astronauts are in space, but they're actually underwater. So they got to airbrush the airbrush the water yeah. bubbles out. But uh, yeah. So, but either way, it doesn't matter if they're faking it, it's underwater, or if they're really up there and it's underwater, either way, either way, it still supports the idea. Oh, no, that's not. That looks like, that, well, that's actually a meteor, no. that one. But still. Yeah. And comets as well look like they're a hole in the sky showing, like that is as well. It looks like there's a hole in the sky. But SpaceX, you see this? It's a hole in the does? sky spraying this. Listen, it's all yeah. it's a breach. It's a breach in the field, and there's vapor yeah. coming through it. Yeah, that's SpaceX. So, you know, that's got fluid characteristics. Look at that. That's a and fluid. That's a mist. Yeah. Look, Look at, at that. that. What the Look hell there? Yeah. Look at that, man. I'm yeah. telling you, man. I got videos on my channel where I talk about the machinery in the hidden in the sky. How Phoenix is not, that's why Phoenix is not an intruder planet. Nemesis X is not an intruder planet. These are phenomena. Our sky, our sky is like a liquid hologram that is just projecting a field that we interpret as a blue, a blue sky, stars, clouds. That shit ain't real. None of that stuff. The whole stellosphere is a lie. Yeah, same yeah man, that's, that's amazing. It is amazing. That was a good little bring up. Find yep. us in a quick second. Ka ching. But yeah, yeah exactly. Now you the found, same you found, you found, you yeah. found, you what found you that stuff of? pretty fast. That's, sh that, yeah. that's shot underwater, isn't it? Yeah. 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 That's a bullet shot into water. And that's supposed yeah, to be, man. you know, that's a, well, it will be. That right there is a breach. That's a breach in the field, man. That is vapor yeah, that is. being spewed, spewed into our atmosphere. It looks like a glitch in the matrix, though. It doesn't. It looks like it's breaking through some sort of barrier. It's crazy. It's a breach. It's a, it's a yeah. breach, and those breach those breaches close fast. But before they close, it must be high pressure on the other side because it's just spewing out vapor. Yeah, that is incredible. That is. Oh, I kind of remember, I kind of actually remember showing that one. <laughs> I've got one of a, like a speedboat, you know. I'm not sure if it's that. It looks like um, going across the dome. Well, it looks like a speedboat. It's one of their rockets. What's this one? Um, yeah, this well, is I saw a video space. where somebody there. Yeah, I saw. Yep, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, doesn't even make it's sense. It's like. Doesn't they make. shot a missile at the barrier. You it I mean? really does look like that. Well, they say um, that um, Kennedy, uh, JFK, was shooting what they call rainbow bombs. The, that was the nickname for them, which was um, nuclear bombs, apparently, at, at the sky and exploding them in space. That was the narrative for uh, what they were doing with these rockets. Is And um, some people, it's on like... You know, some people's flat earth videos that they think they might have been uh, trying to penetrate the dome. You know, you know, the first rollout Artemis moon rocket there, and they got uh, the old skull and crossbone sticker on it. A lot of these things, I think, <laughs> yep. are helium balloons, you know, helium balloons. You know, right. I really do. Yeah. So, what we got here? Cycles, rockets. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, jetpack babies that'd be fun. Can you imagine them flying past the window? No, train them young, yeah. they'll get really good as long as they don't hit anything. That's that would not be good, but you could get them really good. Jetpack babies, you ever yeah. seen? Past you window. ever seen? Oh, you ever seen that French? For it's a, it's a French film in black and white from 1902 called Voyage to the Dermond. Voyage to ah, the Moon. I posted it. It's on my channel. It's, a, it's on my channel. It's on one of my channels. It's the, first, my channel. time they, yeah. Yeah, it's the first time they used special effects in a movie, and it was yeah, about man. going it's to amazing. the moon. And, I mean, yeah. and, and what's crazy is the people on the moon don't look much different than, I mean, it's almost as if NASA borrowed from that damn movie in 1902. Yeah. No, they did. That's where they got it from. Except for the rockets in the yeah, eye of like, the moon. <laughs> 
Yeah, except for the yeah, the rocket hit the eye of the moon. But what I'm saying is, is what the moon looks like. It looks like it's what they borrowed it from right out of the uh, out of the damn movie. So, yeah. so it's like it's so crazy. It's so crazy, man. It's just so crazy. Yeah, yeah. Rockets are not going anywhere. That's for sure. I really don't think so. I think they go up and they come back down again. Look at this stupid ride from antiquity. Imagine being shot in there and then shot out there with all the people in it. Apparently, they're all sitting down. Yeah. Yeah, that's just they just like crazy things going on. Well, I mean that picture that picture was giving it up. You the people are in a rocket going straight into water. Look. Well, um, yeah, they've had um two yeah, yeah, it is actually. That's exactly what they do. Every single one yeah, of them you ever see going up. Yeah, they come straight back down again. So this is a good one. I'm not sure if this is the advert where he's shooting through the dome. You ever seen that? No, I haven't. Oh, no, this is a different documentary following the chronology of they couldn't do any rockets in America at all in the 1930s. And then the next thing you know, they've built giant space rockets and they're taking them up to the moon. So so what do you make of the moon, Jason? What do you make of the moon? What do you think about that? Oh, it's, it's in, yeah, it, I mean, it, it would have to be a holographic. I mean, there's been too many times where people have actually taken photos or or observed through telescopes looking at the moon, where the dark side of the moon, you could see the stars behind the moon. So just that Seen fact them. alone tells me it has to be holographic. Hmm. Yeah. Um, now, I seen a video the other day. I'm not sure where I've seen it. It might have even been on Bro Sanchez, to be honest with you. I'm not sure where it was. Um, some guy, uh, one of their lot in a suit, um, but he's done a presentation where he said that it was an ocean above us and that the moon was a continent. Um, I thought that was interesting because there's this guy, Crow Triple Seven, who was famous for the lunar wave, uh, which seemed like yeah, it was a I, refresh. I, I, yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it was an actual yeah, but, wave. Um, I, I differ. I, I yeah. differ. I've left comment on his channel before because yeah. uh, I, I actually, Actually left a comment on his channel tell him hey man this is really impressive man i'm glad you posted this but i also added to that and said said that i disagree that what he found only applies to the moon the moon is the only observable way to detect that wave but i believe that wave crosses the entire sky multiple times a second the entire sky sim is rebooting every few uh, you know multiple times a second you know but you can just see it really good against the whiteness of the moon and that's what he recorded yeah i, I have had him on my channel i know i know crow um there was a uh, you know a lot of people at the time some people suggested that it was just a jet going past and you caught the heat wave off it um i seen two examples of it just this refresh rate but Honestly, I, I I really doubt the sky. I, I just I'm a sky denier actually at this point in time because oh be you're a sky you denier. Hey, I'm after to be hey, man, I'm you, they, they for it. might try to prosecute. They might try to prosecute you for being a a a, yeah, a, a holo a holo sky denier. Yeah, but the thing is, is like we're supposed to be hurdling through space at an incalculable speed. Um, yet the parallax mm -hmm. of the stars never ever changes. It's the same constellation year in year out. There they are, as expected. And you can follow this chart right the way back through time, and you can find out that Listen, the parallax this, this is, hasn't changed. This is this is the crazy part about it. The Greeks. Let's just say, let's say that the whole historical narrative is true about the Greek astronomers. Listen, where are they like Hipparchus. And Eratosthenes, where they have placed the stars in their star charts, should not be verifiable today. It shouldn't be verifiable today because we're not just going. We're in the the model they've given us is not just that we're traveling ninety three million miles away from the surface of a luminary, and that six months from now we'll be one hundred eighty seven thousand, uh, one hundred eighty seven million miles on the other side of it. That's it. It's, it goes further than that. We're also supposed to be in a system that itself is traveling at almost subluminal speed also. So we would have been in a much different position today, now 23 centuries after these men recorded what the sky looked like. 
the sky today would not look like that because we've moved so far in juxtaposition to so many other luminaries. But that movement is not recorded. The sky is still the exact same way it was presented to the ancients. Hmm. And that cannot so be. The, mo the model is, yeah, the model is wrong. The model is absolutely wrong. And these two suns um, that have been showing up and this atmospherical phenomena, people, you know, some, you know, you can't say that they're lens flare in every case. Uh, there's just too many examples of them, you know, these two suns, which is interesting, like you get in the Book of Miracles. So there you are. There's, there's a space dog <laughs> going off the space, firing rainbows out of his yeah. ass, like they all do in this day and age for some reason. It's all gone rainbow yeah. crazy. There's a that's perversion a of something nice. Yeah, that's ah, oh, it's a Jack Russell. <laughs> that's based on Leica, which sounds like my name, Leica. I reckon Leica uh, was, never went anywhere. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's like lepre leprechaun fat. There he is. There's a uh, Buzz Aldrin. That's uh, decode. Yeah. To the, yeah, you know about that, don't you? The uh, the film of the Overbrook Hotel and so many clues to say that this moon landing was fake but he's a miracle he is that buzz aldrin i can't get over him how he manages to uh stay alive all his life you know and he's that pretty he's still eating steak for fuck's sake i'm like there it is da, na, 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 bullshit. Da, 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 da. it doesn't correspond that's the japanese one apparently went on the moon India yeah. is supposed to be going there at the moment, but you know, we'll see what happens. They're delivering a curry. They'll give everybody. They'll give everybody their turn. Yeah, they they will. They'll give everybody their turn stuff. to promote the lie. Oh, for sure. So um, this was something hitting the moon. I think it was. Oh no, something there. You see here. A little craftage on top of the moon. <clears throat> Which yeah. doesn't look far away. I really don't think it is far away. Oh, there's two things. I don't really trust these TikTok. I've seen a lot of this. Friends. I've seen a lot of this footage. Oh, of, uh, my, of little old... no TikTok. Fuck TikTok. A lot of my friends keep sending them to me and saying, "Look at these TikToks." I'm like, "No, I don't want to. It's not something I do." You are the first man on the moon. They look really happy. They had a really good time, didn't they? It's been amazing. Hell no. That, yeah. That, hey. None of them were happy. They all no. knew they had been MK Ultra, and they knew they were lying to the public. Every one of them. Yeah, yeah. It's all bullshit on toast. And Sadman Tillery, first man to climb Everest, like no one ever climbed it before, apparently. But um, apparently, mm -hmm. he got a hand up because Sherpa Tangzing was there first. But he's he's an, he's like a native of Nepal and not British, so he didn't get a shout. <laughs> <laughs> there's the deal, the world we live in full of fakery and distortion and and dungeon programming as you call it fear yeah, man. got any any pearls of advice for for my subscribers concerning maybe breaking pattern i tried that this well, week it worked but it's been things have been weird hey, concern, so there's just a, concerning sorry, NASA. you see that yeah uh, the moon didn't get discovered till 1609, according to Google. That's what it says. What? Yeah. But there's, um, yeah, scientists who made fundamental discoveries 360 uh, years between Galileo, first observations of the moon, 1609. Okay. That is when the moon was discovered, according to Google. Well, 1609. That's which happens to be an apocalyptic year because a tsunami hit South Wales where I live now, that year, 1609. And they say that the moon was discovered in 1609 by Galileo Galilei. Find that weird? Yeah, whole thing's just weird. Saying, just saying what you're, I'm just saying. You're, well, sorry, it's not really on. saying that. I mean, I mean, it's really, no, I know. it's really saying that since Galileo's did his first observations, but 360 years is very interesting, but it's just, yeah. it doesn't mean anything because nothing happened in 1969. That's all BS. No, I, but, I, doubt, I doubt that's that true anyway. Oh, Galileo, yeah, Galilei. Some, yeah. There's a really good book. There's a really good book called uh, Dark Moon. The NASA, the, uh, NASA whistleblowers speak. It's called Dark Moon. 
really good book. Anybody, anybody who's still clinging to the idea that we really went to the moon in 19, read that book, Dark Moon. The whistleblowers gave it up. I'm talking about they show all the manifest. They show they show the the original photographs and then how the photographs were doctored. Man, it's an awesome book. Yeah, like the blow the the blowing flag, for example. No corresponding light, etc. You know, like there's multiple studio source lights. The shadows are all over the place, and somebody left a, a crisp packet there as well. Just there today. I'm just saying, it's probably not true though. Somebody found that in water. Sent it to me. <clears throat> wow. Tiny aluminium pyramid in the water. There's another one as well. Somebody like sent so me that. So what, what, what are we looking at here? The, how tiny is this? Um, well, he's put a microscope with his mobile phone, one of those small little box ones, you can guess. So I don't know what time's magnification, mm. but not that. It's quite big. Oh. Quite big. Okay. Have you seen this? Right. This is when man did land on the moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Hey, go back <laughs> to that picture like... showing Nixon. Nixon. Go back oh. to that picture showing Nixon off. Yeah. There's a there's already a picture of the moon in in the <laughs> yeah. on, on the I never got there. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah, I know it's daft, isn't it? <laughs> taken from the moon in the background. I seen it um, last That's week. Um, I seen an interesting video Eric Dubé done, which was um, about all American presidents have to be related to Charlemagne, the first millennium emperor of France, Charlemagne, and they have to be. And all of That's them got are pretty, related. Yeah. yeah, all of them are related to the That's British got monarchy. Pretty. Sorry. Yeah, that's gonna piss off some some YouTubers because you got some guys. You got a school of YouTubers that are that are trying to tell everybody that Charlemagne never existed and it's all fake history and all some stuff like yeah. that. So it's all uh, you never know, man. Well, I don't know either. There's not much evidence really, but apparently that's what they're saying. They're saying that. Um, what's that? It's pretty interesting though. Yeah, it is interesting to think that they've got to be a royal and they're all cousins, you know. That picture that picture looks like the type of photos. Go back to that picture right there, right there. This picture ah. looks just like the type of no, the next go, go back. You just you just had it on there. Right there, right there. Yeah. Oh no. No. Wow. You just keep you just keep going over it. Sorry. Right That's there, what? the blob in the blob in, the blob in the sky that says F B Miran. Yeah. Well, okay. There, there's a researcher who's got two books published na named Trevor James Constable, and he he invented his own ultraviolet lens for a camera, not a filter. He he had his own lenses made for a special camera, and he started taking photographs of the sky, and he started photographing these blobs, and they change shape, and they can move at high velocity, and they even know when they're being observed, and they change their behavior. Um, I can't remember the name of his books, but book, but his name is Trevor James Constable. And you can see photographs on Google Images when you when you Google his, his it's real trippy, but he shows these blobs in the sky creating clouds, uh making clouds disappear, uh right. sucking water out of the ground. It's crazy. That's just nuts. No, I've not I've not used it. Looks just like that. Right. Yeah, look him up, man. Look him up. He's got a lot of photographs out there. You know, from his special camera, but um, it's a uh, Trevor Trevor James Constable is his name. I've read both of his oh. books. They're, they're they'll they'll open a whole new a whole new understanding of these white and these yellow orbs that appear everywhere called will o' wisps and Foo Fighters and all that because uh, they can condense down to a small yellow fiery orb and they act with intelligence. It's just crazy, man. These are the same little little things you see going in and out of the moon when you blow up pictures of the moon. It looks like oh. Uh, Different uh different craters open up like a like a like a iris yeah. on an eye and these yeah, little like blobs go in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like the Tycho crater. And, they, and these little blobs fly in and out. Now, now in the culture they're called UFOs, but they're not. These things are entities. Yeah, critters. I I think that as well. I think there's a lot going up on well, up there. Aquatic by nature. <laughs> I really do. 
I'll just struggle through these. This was interesting. This guy here, um, he was a scientist from 1965. He said, there's no way in a million years man can never stand on a physical moon. He said, because it was made of plasma. He also states that the moon is cold and not hot. Like it gives off, you know, well, that, it's actually. It does cold. give off cold. It does give off cold light. Mm. The light of the moon has been measured and it's been shown to not reflect sunlight. It's giving off its own light. And that light I've is seen cold. it. I've, yeah, I've witnessed that experiment on um, a, a meet I went to. Somebody had a thermometer, me measured the, the moonlight, and then basically um, in the shade. And there was a, a difference. There was a, a degree or so difference. So I don't doubt that one. That one's uh, proven to me. I've seen the evidence, and that is it. <clears throat> so. Yeah, lots of these two sons uh, being... Uh, what's that? I took a massive shit over there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so they just keep popping up, Jason. It's nothing to do with me. They just happen. I took that one. Man. That, I know. I know. Sorry. You got you to be the weirdest truther on the internet, man. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Somebody said, suggested in my comments, yeah. I should do like comedy... Um, Truth, like comedy truth uh, sketches or something. I think I should. Yeah, I think I should do that. Yeah. Martin Leake, uh, Martin Leake becomes coach to Houston's female volleyball team. That would be a good one. I'm the star in it, but, obviously. Uh... Yeah, man. They get all mucky and covered in sand. You can help them wipe it off. <laughs> so <they're... laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I can't help myself. All right, then, all we got here. There's that film you were talking about. No, I posted that. That's on my Flat Earth British Think Tank channel. Funnily enough, I've never got copyrighted for it. And it's still there. And, um, I think I've got it on two channels. But a superb No, bit that, movie, you, that, movie, that, that movie's not copyrighted. It's over 70 years old. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's public domain. So, yeah, I, I posted it a couple of times. It's while we were at There's another film to go with it as well. <laughs> uh, from a similar age, the same people who made it. Uh, from oh, who were they? The Lamatere brothers, and they did this other film. Amazing CGI, um, people like phasing in and out, and, and you get a lot of CGI with this as well. People just appearing, which is crazy because Queen Victoria is still alive when that was made. That's the Victorian era. So pyramids underwater. Do you think they would have been underwater, Jason? At some Oh, I'm a hey, Frederick Norton Lewis when he excavated when he when he visited the Great Pyramid in the 1930s, 1937, 1940s. Frederick Norton Lewis was one of the first Europeans to go to the site. He found the pyramids half buried in sand and the entire area covered in seashells. In fact, very recently, there was a bunch there was much ado given about a fossil that was found on the Giza Plateau showing that it too was underwater after the construction of the pyramids. And uh, uh, early researcher, early researchers in the 1800s that were inside the pyramid, the first thing they noticed before actual measurements could be made by Sir Flinders Petrie in 1901 and 1902, they had to break off almost an inch thick of salt incrustations that were in the king's chamber in the grand gallery yeah, I know about in, that. The, in the yeah, queen's yeah. chamber. So, yeah, the great pyramids were yeah, underwater, so. and this is this is even found in the traditions. In the traditions, northern Egypt used to be called the raised land. It had been raised out of the water. In the very oldest traditions of the great pyramids don't have the pyramids on land. It has two pyramids in the water, and there's no mention of the Sphinx. And this is why the Sphinx got so much damp water damage. Not because the Sphinx is 10,000 years old. It's because for 340 years, the Sphinx was under the Mediterranean. Yeah, all that. Yeah, don't give me. Hey, you are. You know, you triggered me, right? You don't talk. Don't talk yeah. about the Great Pyramid around me, man. Well, you know, uh, well, Hancock. Uh, funny, he's got the name Hand Hancock in one name. It's just weird. That. Um, he talked about the Sphinx having water damage at the bottom and this being evidence for some sort of cataclysmic spread. He used that in some of his documentaries. So that was years ago. Can you see that image on the screen at the moment? Yes, I do. So, you know, it could be, yeah, it is interesting because it's showing you that it's, you know, it might not be a physical object and just something along those lines. Absolutely. You know, it's a perspe everything is perspective anyway. We're going to see it from the angle of that we're standing on the surface of Earth. And, you know, 
to me i don't think it's a physical object at all you know and i don't think it's far away as well um but it is a phenomenon i don't think that it's always been there apparently the zulus say that it just showed up like the death star could have been a sun maybe it was a sun that was outed they do say something crazy. well we do it, have you know you know we have what traditions else? of of the sky before the moon appeared even Emmanuel Velikovsky and Hans Bellamy and Hans yeah, Boringer, yeah, yeah. this is the subject well, matter of some of their writings. The pre-Selenites even prided themselves that they're a civilization older than the moon. Hmm. Yeah, some of these oral traditions, they say that, you know, that that um, Zulu guy, the Zulu chief, the one David Dyke talks to, uh, Kridwo, or what is it? I can't pronounce his name. Anyway, he states that the he talks about vapor canopy. I heard him in an interview. He was saying that the world was swampier and more uh, misty, and he says, and there was no moon. He says that in the oral tradition of the Zulus, they say that. So, I thought that was interesting when I heard you say. I was thinking of that guy. I was like, you know, that's what's going yeah, on. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's like, listen, listen. If you if you take if you take the show from the 70s called The Land of the Lost and you mix oh, yeah. it with the the show, the movie called The Dark Crystal from the early 80s. The if you skeleton. mix these two, yeah, I love that film. you basically have the vapor canopy world. There it is right there, all laid out for you. And in the in the in in uh in a land of the lost, there was even high technology. Remember the portals? Remember the yeah, pillars sure. and the portals? They were technological. So, yeah, the vapor canopy world wasn't primitive. It was technologically advanced. It was just a very different world. There's Flammarion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that there. Oh, that's just a bit of it. Yeah. Uh, they've used it. Yeah, they've used it in the past. What's that? Uh, take the hidden paths uh, that run west off the moon and east of the sun. J.R.R. Tolkien. It's not interesting. Listen, that's Tolkien. Tolkien wrote the Lord of the Rings and the Yeah, Hobbit. no, yeah, he yeah, he's wrote, Welsh. He also listen. Tolkien told us the truth. He even told yeah. us about well, in the in the time of the elves, there there was no sun. It was the mist world. Tolkien go Tolkien goes into great detail on his histories in the Silmarillion. Man, Tolkien's revealing the truth masked as fiction i've tried to follow in the same vein i'm just hey i got some news man it's pretty interesting i've never mentioned this to anybody but this just happened but these guys there's, a, there's these three guys that have have a pretty popular comic book line they make comic books and they're all three of them for the past three or four days have been watching all my phalorn saga you know i have another channel called the phalorn saga where i've got 48 48 chapters of, of my epic fantasy series books where I've basically encoded the archaics research into a fantasy realm. They're looking at it right now and going to get back to me because they, they want to do a series of, of comic books based off archaics material, but they're looking at the Phalorn, Phalorn saga first before they start the Phoenix data. But I might have some comic books out pretty soon, bro. Yeah, check these out. Um, I got... Um... I went to a meet the other day, and this guy who's uh, oh no, basically he's uh, done exactly the same thing. These uh, graphic novels, they're fantastic. He cited me in the back page. It was like number one of all his YouTubers. But they're these, these cancel house, and it's they're truth, oh, wow. they're truth things. Yeah, and it's exactly the same thing, graphic novels. It's all about like sort of things you have. You yeah. Know, this part of the Listen, yeah. And reason I, I'm back. looking into this because it's, it's going to reach a wider demographic. There's a lot I'm of telling you, and I'm enjoying it. Get off really graphic, graphic novels. Yeah. Yeah. And all about Hell your yeah, that's badass. Stuff. Yeah. No. Yeah. You can that's put cool. all your subject. They, they smash it. I think they definitely smash it. Um, I'm just going to show some images of some um, portals. You mentioned them earlier. Now, in, this is just me. Yeah. But I think that they're psychics. Yeah. I also think that there's people with like esokinesis type abilities. I think they're in the community. I think they're out, yeah. I definitely think that's a thing that people have extra sensory perception is a real thing. Regardless of well, how science would explain it, you know, spooky action distance, whatever. I think that some of us here, all of us here really are psychic, but they cause some sort of disconnection. 
but they talk about portals don't they in all of the faiths way like if there's another dimension nearby you know stargates in some yep. narratives yep yeah yep or the Look stuff at, that hey, comes true even the even the primitive Stonehenge, when you're when you're in the center ring of the tr trilithons, the chief trilithon gives you the idea of a portal. Yeah, I've spent much time at uh, Stonehenge, to be honest with you. Is <laughs> the buzz that is there is created by people. If you got to go to like Al Avery. Yeah, Avebury's just buzzing, or places like Glastonbury, they're off the radar for vibration. I don't know what's going on. Um, but there's not much of a buzz going on energetically at Stonehenge, unfortunately, I found. The people create it. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, do you think there's clues with that? Narnia, Alice man, in Wonderland, listen, on the rabbit hole? Yeah, man. When, when I was a kid, when I was a, when I was a teenager, I read all seven books of the Chronicles of Narnia multiple Did times because I was convinced that the keys to our reality were encoded in these texts. Man, yeah, yeah I used to read these and I used to highlight. I used to highlight passages. I thought, the, man, this was my first excursion into the rabbit hole, the, yeah. the Chronicles of Narnia. I was fascinated yeah. with that wardrobe. Yeah, yeah, not the only one. <laughs> Hell I used yeah. to, I was thinking that you know I used to think yeah that's definitely what's going on. <laughs> my cupboard. Why don't my cupboard take me to Narnia? Yeah. <laughs> they got those oh, got the yeah. rainbow bridge that's in uh, Asgardian, you know, in a uh... Right. And time travel. Right. Yeah, I'm obsessed with time travel. I always have been. Something that I want to really really do. I don't think it's possible. Maybe without a machine you can do it in a Maybe in a spiritual sense. Maybe go to another time. Separate. Well, next time, next time oh. you're in Texas, yeah. Next time you come to Texas, you might be able yeah. to time travel. And oh, uh, oh, I will. Six, yeah, six we'll hours leave, back in time. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. That that's true. But I, I you know, I want to go back to the 1800s, see what's going on there. I'm just showing your chronologies here, Jason, on your uh, that are linked up through um, your website. For, for the viewers oh man got, i got uh, a whole bunch of them oh well, 1100 so people them. yeah this is a crazy image this one jason isn't it this german image yeah of all of these uh yeah that, these that anomalies was, that's what appeared in the skies over nuremberg in 1561 yeah yeah i got a booklet that, of it. but, it's just crazy great black yeah. spear yep. yeah what what are they talking about it's just wow so um I, I did some activism this week where I was talking to like just ordinary people on the streets concerning truthy matters. And what I found is really? like maybe eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a park, I, I was literally swamped. We had like dozens of people around us. We got heckled, shouted at, threatened, um, all sorts. And the German boys that were in the video that got really well received um, demanded that my friend took the video down, um, which he's had to do, unfortunately. Um, so yeah um debating the public or talking to the public and it's a really hard job and what i found is most people maybe 80 percent of people will stay fast asleep yeah this is what i'm finding of course they not will gonna, of course they will yeah yeah they're not gonna they're not gonna change their paradigm anytime soon a lot of them and uh i found that a bit of a wake-up call i was like well we got a really uphill battle here um you know, it's great when truthers come together because everyone's on the same page. But when you're like meeting people in the streets, people are just saying you're nuts. That's all we were having. It's like, yeah. you actually got a brain? Right. Can you think for yourself? What about science? You know, it's just like, and the, if you're the same old um, stuff for years. These are good. These on your on your site here, Jason. Chat, timelines, archaics, 2.0, doomsday yeah. chronology. I got one, I got one yeah. pack. For like twelve dollars, you can get three hundred and forty something charts. It's all in, it's all in one download. I try to make it as yeah. cheap as possible, and it's a. Uh, it took it took little, about channel. fifteen years to draw to draw all those chronological charts. But yeah, yeah I've got I've got I think I got the raw copies on a, on a drive you gave me. You know. Yeah, you I did. I gave you. I gave you a copy. 
Well, I I actually, actually, I stuff. got over 400 charts. I've got over 400 chronological charts all together. You got them all. You got all of them. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've looked over it, Jason, and I'm like, how the... I, I was thinking, how the fucking hell did you get that together to get the patience to just draw that? Because it's so detailed and there's so much in it. I'm like... Might have had something. To, might have had something to do with being bored on the cell block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the answer I come out with. It was like, well, yeah, no time yeah. on it. You had a lot of time on his hands, so yeah. But yeah, that was really good work. That is fucking hell. Wow. Imagine pulling something like that off. I don't think I could. I just haven't got that detail. I can't do that detail. I can't get it down. My brain collapses. You got a good good head for figures and maths, though, which I feel. Yeah, this is um, a great exposition, 1900, infancy of film, um, in Buffalo, upstate New York. And the first city to be electrified, unfortunately, is, is uh, Buffin. But it's just fantastic. Wow. Um, this, Yeah, yeah. I, I was just wondering if, you know, we talk about this a lot, if this world that you see in the expositions was a world that was what the world looked like at that time so excuse me i had to refresh it's just been standing there for a while <clears throat> there you are so these are all public domain these films there's plenty of them you can find on the internet explorer that you can just use on uh, youtube but yeah yeah look at the size of the world and you notice how everyone's got an umbrella and covered up they can't go in the sunlight on the beach they're all covered up on beaches it's like no one can go in the sunlight and wondering wow. whether they've all been underground you know and they're all really pale jason like anemic as well i'm wondering if uh you know they come from underground and why we don't know what's underneath us i haven't got a clue what is underneath us they've only dug eight kilometers so down all, apparently so, yeah so it's almost as if this is a leftover civilization that when they came back to the surface they're just now refamiliarizing themselves with the places they've been underground for a while uh exactly what i think's going on yeah and it kind of it kind of makes you wonder just how old how old the film really is i mean john levy uh, said exactly I've shown the video. same yeah could be an older time i like i like, I like john Listen, yeah, I spoke to Jay in emails. Old. I sent him a thumb drive with 47,000 images on there. And um, he just sent me a message yeah. saying, how long is my thumb drive going to be? Because basically he's got to do a vlog on the weekend and he wants some juice. Because I give him <laughs> stacks of juice. So, uh, Look at that. Yeah, it's all yeah. electricity. That's all electricity. Yeah. yeah, first electrified city in the world, apparently, um, was Buffalo and uh, the exposition. And this is at like 1902. It's like everything's electrified so i can only presume that that's what the world was like before like before before and like you said jason john levy said exactly the same how do we know we're even looking at that time there's no date like to you know on there to say yeah um i think that i yeah. think we could be looking at further back another age how do we know that's right just no way of knowing that's right yeah just yeah and so and i know it's hey, when you look I, I, well, Sorry. Oh, Matty. Listen, on my own channel, I, I have a video on my own channel where I show the the uh, Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Herald or the Los Angeles Times newspaper. And I show yeah. where it goes from the 1890s and then it goes all the way to 1912. But the year 1902 is missing. And That's everything before the whole year 1902 is not is not in this book, and it's supposed to be a year by year of all the all the major stories, and it gives every single year, but 1902 it ignores. And what's crazy about it is that everything prior to for all the way up to 1901 is is black and white illustrations and art depicting all these historical events in the newspaper. But once it gets to 1903, it's it's using black and white photographs. And uh, remember, 1902 is a Phoenix year. So why the sudden change? Why 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 omit the entire year? So I don't know. It's just it's it, in in and of itself, it's not proof of it's not proof of anything. But well, but oh, I wonder added why they with had all the, the wealth of data, yeah, added with all the wealth of data, oh. it's just a data point. I'm wondering if the whole world was monochrome back in the Never Reset. <laughs> <laughs> they had it like this, like reality was black and white. <laughs> Color yeah. arrived. Okay, like it kind of made it, 
Yeah, I mean, the, all these old films kind of make you wonder. Now, I'm wearing this hat here. I've never wore hats in my life until I started doing it in 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 the studio. Uh, uh, recently, I haven't really done. I've never done this before. This is all YouTube. Oh, I love hats. Comic hats stuff. Are wicked. But yeah, I started liking the hat. I got this hat from my dad, uh, and I've been wearing it ever since. You know, in private, I don't never do it in in public. But you know what? It's a uh, kind of makes you wonder. All these old films, we always see a cloudy sky and everybody wears hats. Yeah, everybody's got a hat on. Everybody has got a hat on in your world. And everyone's got immaculate clothes on, you know, when they're not supposed to have washing machines or, you know, they starch everything. You just got to wonder, you know, how they pulling this off. Everyone looks so good, look. You know? In the past. Yeah. When it's supposed to be like a dirty old world with nothing going on, you know, everyone's struggling, terrible poverty. Not really what we see in the foot, but in the image. Check this out. This is interesting. This is um, if you get on a tram, turn of the century in Vancouver. Before all is of snow these cameras. Are... No, no, no. It's just been. Um, it's cow shit there, but it's just been um, colorized. Yeah. It was, you know, obviously black and white. But mm. for the, it's the earliest uh, next to the San Francisco 1906 footage. This is the only, the other yeah, best one available of that period. Cars have not yet been invented or put on the road. Um, got electric tram, which is funny. The electric tram came before the motor car. Everything else is hot, but the size of the antiquity just is in, is incredible. So everyone's covered up. Everyone's dressed in black. Everyone says good morning to one another. Well, why? What you morning? You know, like I said, I think that they didn't. There are no founders in this place. They found it in this place. Is what I think. The size of that thing. And then turns around in the high street. Oh, you bet. Man, that. again, again, it's like, I mean, I theorized this on my own channel. I mean, are we dealing with, are we dealing with a construct that has the ability to produce ex nihilo completed 3D cities and then populate them? Are, are these <sighs> it can can it just do like 3D printing of cities and then populate them and then even instill the memories in the people to where there's only a confusion for a couple hours and then everybody just kind of falls in with their programming? Oh, <sighs> man, what a head fuck! Yeah. They could do that. You know, like that Dark City is just too, you know, I think about that film quite a lot. You know, the, you, I know they, it's not a technology, but it's an ancient, you know, it's an ancient advanced uh, peoples doing it. But at night, they all link minds and they just change the architecture and everything has changed. And this happened to me this week. I, I just thought I was Mandala affected. I was in a city that I know super well and I'm stood there and I was like, where the fuck am I? And nothing looked the same. And I'd only been there a year ago. I don't know what happened. Nothing was where it was supposed to be. And I turned around to get my, you know, to get my bearings. And, you know, I used this pub, which I've always used. And it wasn't there. I'm like, no, it's there. And uh, right. it wasn't there. So I'm thinking, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, it was. It was a head <laughs> mash. I didn't know where I was. So like in Dark City, they change your act, you know, and then they re reinstill memories when people are asleep at night and they wake up. You never get to Shell Beach because Shell Beach is never there. This place is exactly the same, Jason. We can't see the fences yeah, and the I walls, agree. but there's, there's fences and walls. We can't just scoot off where we want to in Antarctica or the North Pole without permission and, and you know, some sort of military, you know, aggression show. Um, if you try. Which you know we've seen uh, endless cases of Vanderhoy when he tried to go there. What happened? Yeah, if I can blow him off hey, the wall. Do you have? So. Do you have the 1902 footage of the aerial tra train? Sure. That sure, is just sure, sure. it is absolutely fantastic. It is so yeah. hard to believe this was 1902. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I I can't imagine how they put it all up in the days of. Um, Horse and cats. There's no cats delivering all of this, uh, you know, this uh, um, unbelievably big. Oh, train. Anyway, I got it. Um, these unbelievably big columns and beams that you find. <laughs> it's just phenomenal. This is, if you haven't seen this film, you're in for a treat. Is that the one? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll show you a different version. This one is not too bad. They show you the equivalent. It's still there in the modern day, and somebody's overlapped it with the version, which I will show you, of the other version of the SkyTrain. <clears throat> but this one's absolutely fine. So just now, I won't give you volume just in case there is. Uh, excuse me. Okay. Okay, where is it? Okay. No, it's not that one. There you go. Let me get rid of that. Okay. So Skytrain. So yeah, it's in a German city near uh, Frankfurt, as far as I know. The one below you can see. I'll show you the better, bigger image in a minute of the Skytrain. And that's it in the modern day. So that was apparently brought up um, sometime in the late 1800s. It's electric. Horse and cat just below. Full wow, of that's badass. Somebody went back and re uh, redid that video. So the, yeah. those big old steel beams are still there. Yeah, it's that it's that strong, and it's still the same train, still operational in, in this day and age. It's just like what, and that was built sometime late eighteen hundreds because this is like nineteen o two. Funny year that, isn't it? Wow. So, yeah, wow. I know. Wow, that's amazing. It's mind blowing. It goes over water. Yeah, and then it comes into some it's sort amazing. of station, drops you off right in the center. So I can't help thinking that they had some sort of technology going on like this all the time. How do we know something like that was not on um, Great Wall of China? You know? Right. Just saying. Just saying. So Skytrain, Skytrain. Yeah, I should have a... Uh, oh, excuse me. Let me just come back a minute and find it. Then I've got so many videos, it's hard to even imagine. I could just bring up pictures to, to accompany any of our conversations. It's really good. <laughs> So we've got uh, yeah, 1,128 people watching. Thanks so much for popping by, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the show so far. Please uh, give this uh, show a share if you can, if you want, or if you can. And uh, and like if you can. So mind-blowing. There you are. Thank you, Leila. So we got some happy peeps in yeah, the house. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, so it. Okay, I'm going to bring uh, more images up. Let's have a look. And more Skytrain. This one, I got another one. It's a Skytrain. Which is the complete one, uh, bigger. I train. Uh, God, I got so many images. It's hard to even imagine. No, no, it's just that one at the moment. I can't find the other one. What have I got it under? Uh, not sure. Anyway, it's a bit of a fail on that one. <clears throat> can't find. I'll be doing one. a. I'll be doing a chat in a couple days, like two days from now. I'll be doing a chat with Autodidactic. Uh, oh, cool. It's been a while since Campbell, since Campbell and I uh, did a show together. But uh, same here, same here. Yeah, he's been busy, man. He's been doing all sorts of things, and uh, that would be nice to catch up with him myself as well. So he has been about I've seen him posting. So yes, yay for Campbell. <laughs> oh, totally tactic. So what have you got planned in the near future? I'm coming back to Texas, so I guess and I'll be hook up, with, cooking up with you sometime soon. <laughs> oh yeah, man. You you already know. Yeah. You already know how we do it over here. We're gonna we're gonna have yeah, some man. fun. But oh, next yeah. time you come to Texas, though, we do we do need to take one of those trips to either Rockwall or uh, uh, Glen Rose uh, Park, Fossil Rim, and all that. Yeah, yeah, do something. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely do something like uh, that. Something to start. I know. For, I'm gonna I'm going to Galveston. You guys went to Galveston last time you were here, but this. Yeah, before, yeah. Before I lost my glasses Texas, in the though, sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got some good. You got some good ones now, though. But, uh, yeah man yeah, yeah uh, these are the best glasses i've ever I'm, had these are american glasses i'm gonna i'm gonna way. go do some videos from galveston i'm gonna go stay two or three days in galveston i'm gonna do some videos uh just go stay on the beach and relax and 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 detox and do a personal reset and uh and then uh come galveston back Galveston is amazing i love the place it's so texas and it's just how uh, i like it you know not to uh <laughs> you know, not not too stuck yeah. up, if you know what I mean. It was just my sort right. of place, Galveston. Yeah, man, I absolutely loved it, and uh, just perfect scenery, really. And as I said, I don't like all right. of that that posh stuff going on, which I don't do posh, which I'm really grateful for. <laughs> right. So, uh, right. so this is um, the only other measure. This is the best uh, bit of footage out of antiquity. There's no bit, doubt about it. And this is two days before the earthquake in San Francisco. This is basically uh, Market Street. And um, I think this is two days. 
before two days the before the earthquake. Stick. Yeah, yeah. It's, wow. it's it's just yeah. I've got the footage of what this looks like. It's creepy. Uh, a day later, um, amazing. which I can show. Yeah, but it's fake. Um, as far as I can make out, it's some sort of Hollywood production. This car just went past with a seven, and this car. You're going to see them going around the block. This one just turning around and coming around again to keep in the camera shot to give you. See, they're going round, and they'll come back now because you'll see them again. Oh. In a minute. Now this guy with see the guy with the baby or the doll. Yeah, yeah, nearly, nearly killed the baby then, and everyone is making suicidal thing steps like you know like there's nothing going on. Yeah, you want to get killed? Don't worry about it. And what you find is there's people further up the street who are waiting for the camera because they know it's coming yeah it's a dead giveaway okay. these cars going around the block watch this one again it'll be around again in a minute one thing you won't find the two days later when the entire street is like smoldering is there's no cars on the street like not one and nowhere else at this period has got wow. that many mobile that's cars. that's a, at... that's an interesting yeah. comment so there's yeah. no wreckage of vehicles no no i'm gonna, I'm gonna get this book i have a I have a hundred year old book about, about the San Francisco horror. I appreciate that it happened 5 a.m. in the morning and not many people would be parked up, but you'd still see some debris of cars or vehicles if there's this many. You should, I've never seen one. Yeah, suicidal. Don't really give a shit. It's like nobody's got any brains or something. And with something else, see that cart? You'll see another cart in a minute. It's going over cobble and it's nearly coming apart. Proving to me that I don't think cats and cobble ever went together. I don't think there was a long time where cats were a thing, to be honest with you. See these two, they're going round again. You'll see them again in a minute. They're just filling in the frame because it's a fake film. Why would they do that? John Levy suggested that the apocalyptic film that I can show you shortly of this street two days later is actually, like you said earlier, from an older time. And this is after that apocalypse. And they built it all back up again. The other way around. Which gave me a really creepy feeling when he said this. I thought there might have been some sort of element of truth into it. You know? Something is so off. Look at them. They know the camera's coming. Smiling. Well, I got, Copper nose. Yeah. I really, gotta get, I really gotta get this thing organized. Yeah. Yeah, it's just nuts. These are electric trams. Apparently, see that cable? The line goes down the middle of the tracks. Apparently, it's a hooked-on electric cable. That never stopped operation, even during the earthquake, after the earthquake and the firestorm. The tram stayed operational the whole time. Exactly the same as what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. All trams were operational after a nuclear bomber apparently dropped. Makes no fucking sense. None of it to me. At all. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. It's the best footage out there. It's just so crazy, uh, Jason. It just blows my mind every time I see it. <laughs> There's a little boy in a minute. He's in the back of some sort of cart and he's not supposed to do what he's doing, but he gives the game away. You know, I've watched this a hundred times, you know, for clues. And that's what nails it to me. The whole thing's fake. They set it up like, um, I don't know, Cecil B. DeMille. They can do it, one street. They do it in the modern day. Yeah. They do it in every Hollywood production to make it look like the whole city's empty. Yeah, they do. And they can do, and they do it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Cesar B. DeMille used to use, um, like for the film Cleopatra, which was made in the 20s, half a million extras in the film Cleopatra. Half a million. He paid them all. Just So they were doing that in the films in the 20s. Yeah. So why wouldn't they do it then? Right. Yeah. And everyone just hanging around in the road, Whoa. like it's just look at him. He nearly died. He just nearly fucking died that yeah. guy there. He did that deliberate as well. <laughs> I want to slap him. Yeah. That's the stupidest yeah. thing I've ever seen. Second stupidest thing I've ever seen. First was me losing you my See the antenna? The there's an an there's an antenna on top of that trolley. Yeah, I don't yeah, know it's... what that's hooked up to then, because some of them haven't got that. Some of them are like below street. For electricity. Mm -hmm. I actually had this argument with a subscriber from mm -hmm. San Francisco, but he seemed to know more right. than me, so I thought, yeah. Well, uh, it it's also very believable uh, because 
so many people are very curious of the camera sticking out the front of this trolley. You know yeah, what I mean? I got that. I got that. And he must have had some gantry as well away from me. Um, but this car, you know, this one with the, that just passed earlier. He's going, why are the cars going around? Maybe it's that much of a novelty. I thought about that as well. You know, these cars going around to just okay, to so, see this. Uh, so this, it's uh, obvious that these cars had license plates even back then. Um, I looked into that. No, they, they were introduced later because I thought that was an anomaly, you see, why they were required because registration two, plates. And they said two of these yeah, cars no. had license plates. Yeah. Um, so they weren't required, but some states required some sort of registration. Yeah, I did look into that. I did wonder about that, Jason. So I did do a bit of research. Um, no. Um, if you look at the equivalent film of, say, Stuttgart in Germany or something like that, at uh, exactly the same year, there's no cars. San Francisco got all the cars oh. in the world, apparently. But Yeah. Look at that guy. He nearly died, too. How many people? Are gonna die <laughs> in this, you know. Yeah. It makes no fucking sense at all. Uh, yeah, everyone's doing suicidal, stupid shit. It just drives me nuts. Well, but I get you. Yeah, yeah there's gantry it and it's not possible. No yeah. traffic laws. No traffic laws. No, apparently, no left or right lanes. So, well, I actually, well, what I is think the... they follow the trams. What is the central building? What is the central that building is, there that, that, that he's going for? That is the terminus. That is San Francisco's ferry terminus building. And if I just um, show you something mm. a second, uh, which is going to be really weird. Now, that survived the earthquake that did weirdly. There was only a crack in it. And what it did was just following um, the event. Now, let me bring my channel up. Just following the event of the earthquake excuse me here on my videos if i just show you i'm just having not the volume down um it's spooky this is the spookiest footage you haven't seen this yet you're going to wonder what the hell's happened to your reality because you know from that what i just showed you to this devastation and what you find is there is an endless amount of people all coming from the same direction, not with bags, not with anything, not in shock, not looking at anything, not not bothered by the apocalypse around them, all going in the same direction. Thousands of them all immaculately turned out and they just turned up from that building we just showed you called the Terminus building. Interesting name, Terminus, Terminal. Yes, it is. So I did this video. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, back somewhere like... Uh, the San Francisco firestorm makes no sense. You always get these strange cloud banks. You don't know what's going on in there. And and then I showed the um, before, which I just showed you now, just now. And then you get to two days later. Just two days later. Market Street has disappeared. And then there's all of these people all looking like they turned out well. It rained that day. Two days later, there was rain, um, which helped the fires, out the fires. A lot of the fires were deliberately caused by uh, explosive charges, which are called, you know, to cause some sort of fire break uh, by destroying buildings and areas, actually. So all walking in the same direction, all coming from that terminus building. Nobody gives a shit about the apocalypse around them. So, it's, imagine that, though, you know, in a massive American city and it's just reduced to rubble. You've got the film, you know, of both eras, you know, when it's okay and when it's not okay. And there they are. That's closer to the terminus. You can see there's the terminus building. People just pouring out of there. Go in somewhere. That tall, build, that tall building through the earthquake made it. Yep. It had a crack in it, and they put it in scaffolds. The first thing that had scaffolds on in the whole of San Francisco, they put it on straight away, and everything else. They just brought 100 FEMA camps in, because there was a FEMA 100 in San Francisco, and they had all people living in tents and stuff. You don't see any Chinese in these pictures, weirdly, because it's supposed to be in a really massive Chinese population. I find that interesting. Um and these people seem to have a designation. They seem to know where they're going. They haven't got bags or nothing. 
Are these the population of San Francisco? Why are they arriving from the terminus if they are? Oh, man. These are arrivals, I think. I think they took out a culture. And I think that they replaced it. Just like um, what the Reich was supposed to have done in World War II when it kicked a load of people out and then took their places. That sort of thing. Stole a civilization. Is what I think. It's the spookiest thing in the world. And they, and they give us a fabricated history as well. So they're faking movies. What? And faking our environment as well. The fuck? You see, they've already started two days later to put the scaffold on that tower. First thing they did. The rest could go to hell. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, isn't it? i got endless amounts of these images, hours and hours of it. It just gives you the worst sort of apocalyptic uh, surrounding. And this picture here is it fully in scaffold. Have you ever seen this image? It's a gigapix no, image taken from a blue, right? And check what I found in the sky. Come on, man. No shit. And it was taken by a blue God. just after the event. You can see right down, and then there's that in the sky. Yeah, man. Oh, this this is so, image. so bizarre. Yeah, it's mind-blowing, isn't it? And they, they say this is taken from um, this you know, Lawrence captive airship from 3,000 foot over San Francisco Bay. Showing you Gigapix image of the events. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lawrence, yeah. the Lawrence captive airship, meaning that a captive airship means that the airship belonged to an enemy or it wouldn't be captive. From Lawrence captive airship. That's what it says. You don't name you don't name a vessel captive unless it belonged to the enemy and you appropriated it. You understand? That's interesting. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, I never actually thought about that. Yeah, it's really unusual to call it captive unless it is a captured airship. And then you've got that crazy thing up in the air, which looks like a steampunk thing. That is so bizarre. I mean, we do have we do, I mean, we do have references to airship battles and wars, and that the whole deal about the Hindenburg was all BS. Oh, no shot, no doubt about it. <laughs> I read, I've read some of the depositions and stuff that people said about the San Francisco earthquake, um, but they were la the um, couple of that night before the earthquake hit. Um, they said there was loud explosions coming from an easterly direction that shook the air and sounded like large cannon fire. And then that was that night, and then the earthquake hit by five. Yeah, okay, and they're in balloons above a city that's going to be completely destroyed. I think the balloons might be something to do with it. I really do. You know, this is a, this is a selective uh, uh, raising of a city because some bits are completely left alone. You get the same in World War Two as well, like this. You know that Man, that's, that's Chicago same, fire. The, the, Chicago. That's the same Eight. nine eleven destruction pattern. Look how look how localized that destruction is. It's Streets concentrated around the yeah. buildings only. Yeah, and everything falls in its footprint. That's the weirdest thing about all of it. Is, and what I'm saying is, 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 look how small the fragments are. I mean, come on, bricks. You bricks. should have whole. You should still have whole walls intact if they would have fell down from an earthquake. It just makes no sense. And this this black, you know, this building must be ma massive, and it just looks like it's been scorched. You know, stone. This is stone. It just makes no sense. And we find this for all them American city fires. World War Two is a definite to me. That Baltimore. Again, what reduces things to tiny little bricklets? Fire. Don't do that. I defy anyone to say the fire reduces a building that looks like that with massive granite and big stone to tiny little bricks that look like that. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I, yeah, I think there's a definite other technology going on. I have proposed what I think is going on. Especially with these uh, city resets, where if Boston and Chicago and all of them, yeah, is all the examples. Yeah, the earthquake, the earthquake. Listen, an earthquake can definitely do the damage that knocks building down, but it wouldn't reduce those walls. And in, in yeah, 
There's too much. There's too yeah. much that would have just laid down and stayed intact. Whole, whole walls would have just laid down, and there would have been some fracturing, stress fractures, and cracks. Some of them would have broke apart, but there would have been whole bricks still mortared to other bricks. Yeah, it wouldn't have looked like little things like that. And you find all the roads are always clear. Yeah. It's like, what did they send the bulldozers in? Look, yeah, it's like no. all of that. And they the didn't trees, have bulldozers you know. back then. No, I know, and I'm just being saggy, but like I'm just saying, like the, all the roads are always clear. And what you find is like you found with like paradise in California, maybe, is the buildings have disappeared, and they're all gone in their footprint. The roads are clear, and the trees are still standing. It's like, <clears throat> what did the fire miss the trees? How did that even happen? And they're in balloons as well, which is interesting. I think they're doing something from above. I really do. I've shown evidence. Of well, Zeppelin's the whole picture, using... that oh. whole picture of the Zeppelin and the title yeah. of that picture about a capture, a yeah. captured airship, that cha that changes the whole narrative. That just changes the whole narrative. Yeah, it really of what does. Was going on. You know, it really does look like there was some sort of sea. You know, I'm not saying that America had a war. They're not telling us about. But this thing looks like a serious I mean, war. It almost happened. gives you the, you know, yeah. So strange it. is it How kind of, it kind of makes you wonder intact? if, yeah, yeah, What's that? yeah, I know. <clears throat> so, so we have the Nautilus in twenty thousand leagues under the sea. Captain Nemo oh, is in a technologically advanced. He's in a technologically advanced submarine, and he has docking bays in the underworld, under the ocean. Kind of makes you wonder: were were these attacks initiated by by the breakaway civilization that I that I've been claiming on my channel lives in and has lived in the underworld and has always lived down there, and that's why they're protected from the Phoenix resets. I mean, was this a show of power? Was this, hey, man, just because y'all are on the surface and getting smarter and smarter and more widespread, listen, we'll still humble you. Was there some type of political things going on with our government actually knowing of the existence of a breakaway civilization? And they they sent zeppelins from the underworld through apertures and attacked us? Hmm. This is that so is bizarre. Interesting. You, say, you should say that. Let me just bring some... Uh examples of my airships up so yeah i've been talking about airships for years man I, I propose that they're like you know the transport of the old world because it makes so much sense and like you said with the hindenburg oh the humanity there was two separate hindenburgs one of them had a massive fucking swat sticker on the side you know apparently the graf zeppelin did and then it haven't when it burns so they must have painted over it or oh, there's two of them one or the other and, you know, on all of this, what they just done with the Titanic, you know, uh, it's just. Oh, excuse me. What have I done? Uh, no, I've just stopped sharing. I haven't brought it up. <laughs> excuse me. Do you know what I was just going to show? My, 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 my mind just failed me. Um, share. That's Do you crazy. remember? That's just. Yeah, man. Anybody in chat? No, I don't remember what you. Oh, you're talking about the Hindenburg, but. Oh, uh, I don't know. airship. Yeah, Tatar Air. Yeah, airships. So, yeah, I got endless amounts of airships. But, yeah, I propose there are all these towers in antiquity. And that balloon, that air punky, that a steampunky looking thing that is uh, on my right. channel. Yeah, present. Ooh, coffee. Yay. Jason's favorite. I got me a. <laughs> I got me a uh, refill. Just ask me a question. I am, dude, I'm ready to take off. Just ask me anything. I just got a refill. Ah, oh, no. Questions from the audience then, eh? <laughs> I got so many questions. There's Hindenburg. Yeah, people were just stepping out of it. And um, they had all these film crews there. And it's the whole thing was just set up anyway. I think there was two different films of it as well. Because one there is completely horizontal and it's just two different films. The thing was fake, this thing. Till 35, yeah, whatever. And then they give up in favor of uh, air uh, planes. When we were doing absolutely fantastic with the old Zeppelins. So you got, mm -hmm. got swastikas stickers on the tail there, but they're not on that other one. Must have, like I said, painted over. America didn't have a problem with that in the 19, you know, 1930s. A little bit later, though. We're going to fuck them up in World War II. <laughs> Things change, eh? 
It was a massive swastika, though. It's not on the one that's in the f- burning thing. That's a movie, the, the Hindenburg movie, which suggests a guy like ignites it with a bomb. And this thing used to couple onto the top of the Empire State Building. American military had big, massive dirigibles, not only the Germans. Oh, it's amazing. It is amazing to think that, you know, they didn't fly high over the ocean. It was, apparently, it was only like a hundred, couple of hundred feet. And um, it's the most comfortable mode of transport and safe to, you know. But I'm not sure if they didn't want to do it because of a couple of reasons, you know, in favor of airplanes. And I think jet fuel hoaxes are definite. I think they're doing that. Um, I think their engines probably slow the plane down, not speed it up. So I think it's going on. <laughs> Um, but with the air balloons, um, that would have been fantastic if we'd have gone with them. They're a little bit slower, but they're completely safe. Get a well, I was raised up. watching. I was raised watching a Zeppelin my whole childhood. I was. I was, I spent my first uh, fifteen. You know, my first uh, ten years of life in spring and it was right next to goodyear blimp and it's a zeppelin all right I used to watch the yeah, goodyear yeah. blimp t- take off all the time as a child we used to watch it all the time and i used to go oh uh, oh uh, outside and play and we 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 were just fascinated it was so huge but it was the, it's called oh. the goodyear blimp and yeah i know i've seen it was I, just I, right, I, right down the road from where i was raised wow yeah i've seen a good year blimp i don't know if it's the same one but it's been here in britain i've seen it go over when i was a kid whoa that's nuts so yeah look at the speed they could have gone they did stupid stunts with them you don't see anything about balloons in a modern day and that's why i think a lot of these skyscrapers i i don't trust the narrative for uh statue of liberty there's something definitely going on with that just really really dodgy the whole video that i've shown of uh of it being built <laughs> yeah nine yeah. nine months biggest building in the world ever and it's been built, all built in nine months. Just makes no fucking sense. So, I've got some older depictions as well. I was looking for further back. I've shown evidence of uh, electric motor cars or sort of floating cars, if you like. 1700s. I've shown that. I've got it in one of my book, one of my booklets. <laughs> so, I haven't got a clue how long we've been talking, Jason. I wouldn't even like to estimate it. I think we started uh, half past a couple of hours, maybe. Are you all right? Are you all right? I don't, even, I don't even know. I don't even know. We can go I don't, on for I don't even while, know. but pretty, pretty soon yeah, I'm going to have to go get me some chicken or something. I'm hungry. Same year, bro. Same year. And I, and I basically hassled you into getting to a live feed when you just walk through the door as well. How kind are you? Sorry to mess everyone up. I'm around. cool with it, man. All right, thanks, Jason. It's awesome when you bring when you bring yourself here. We love it here over on Flat Earth British. I dare say we'll be doing a live eat together one day soon with the gang. Yeah, man, we do gang hook up. We, we we're gonna need to do a live on my channel next. Oh, I love that. I'd love that. So yeah, that was good. Did you were you on um, Paranormies last night? Not last night. But they might have, they might have, I did record with them recently, but it was for Archaics TV. Ah, right. I'm not I'll sure be, if they I'll actually be, went live. I'll, no, I'm supposed to go on with the Paranormies on their channel like next week. Oh, right, fair enough. They're a good bunch of, good bunch of blokes. I'll scream on there with them. They're funny. They're really funny. So That's thank right. you everybody for uh, popping by. We're going to be wrapping this up soon. It's a bit late for me. Alan and Jason's been on the go. Um, well, we will be making an appearance again soon, like Jason said. You can go over on the Archaics channel. Yes! Okay, I got my uh, <laughs> I got my Phoenix on. Ignore what it says. Oh, underneath. man, you got the Phoenix on no. there. I see you. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my Phoenix on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice cover up. Nice cover up. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh. Yeah, no, not saying nothing. So, yeah, thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show. Like I said, we'll be back. Martin League will be back very soon. Yes. Okay. With more epicness. And Jason, that was very epic. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for letting me show images and stuff and talk through them. That was epic. Yeah, man. Woo-hoo. It's always a blast. Says, always, brother. Okay, well, I'll catch up with you soon, yeah? And everybody else in chat, thanks so much. So everything you see about Jason's channel is linked below in my description box, okay? The 
Arkex.com, and he's got Arkex TV as well. You can join. I'm on there. I'm on there talking. <laughs> it won't somebody, on somebody the just, hey, somebody got down. They just said Jason and the Martin nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you bunch of nutters. What do you like? Oh my God. They're so Man. funny. Yeah, they had a blast. These yeah, you lot, guys, you guys, you guys in the UK are nuts. No shit. There's my son there, Welsh Dragon Metals, Lawrence Leaker. Good timing, sleepy away. There you are, son. Nice one, babe. Nice one, mate. So, yeah. Yeah, we are completely nuts. That's how we survived this shitty climate and this shitty environment. You know, it's, <laughs> they've taken the communism to a whole new level, yeah. It's closer to North Korea, yeah, than probably any other country. I'm surprised they haven't got speakers in the street shouting at you and stuff, yeah. Uh, that's to come. So, yeah, it's got the shit, yeah. Shit in a handbag. Took a shit, took a shit. Terrible. So, <laughs> coming to Texas. Yes. Woohoo. So, thanks, Jason. <laughs> I'll let you go so you can get off and munch that chicken. That good southern about, chicken, which I'm I know what to... that tastes like. I'm jealous. I'm... I know what that tastes like. Man, I love that southern chicken. It's Thank beautiful. You. There's auto detective. <laughs> There's Campbell there, bro. There's Campbell. Love to all. There you are. Auto, um, that auto, auto. We'll be on in a couple days, bro. Woohoo! There you are. Something else for store to look forward to. Let's set our set our uh, bells and get this and watch all of the true fitch happening. Very much happiness is happening in the community right now. So there's more to come very soon. Keep an eye on this channel. Hey, there are some epic auto things. Auto of... Yeah, auto didactic is going live in five minutes. Did you hear that, guys? Um, Campbell, link it up in the chat. Everyone can pile over there, then. You can get pick up a big crowd. That'd be cool. Yeah, you are. Hippie Shake's doing it. She's a, she's a babe. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Hippie Chick H. So thanks, subs. Thanks, uh, Squirrel Sniper and all my mortgages and everybody that's been awesome. Okay? And we'll be back very soon. So thanks, Jason. Later. Thanks. See you later. Be good. See you soon. <laughs>